Welcome to NBA Imperialism, the show where everything is made up and the points don't matter. That's right, the points are like Ben Simmons starting for your team. Doesn't really matter. NBA Imperialism, if you aren't aware, works something like this. We have a map of America and Canada as well included. There's no teams in Mexico <clears throat> yet. And what we are going to do is determine who is the true superpower of America and Canada to a lesser extent. We have a wheel with all 30 NBA teams. It's gonna spin in really, really low res, janky JavaScript. I don't know why this is so slow. Uh, for some reason, this page is completely crashing, but let's say we have the Denver Nuggets here and then you go to the next wheel and you say, all right, Denver, what direction do you wanna go on the map of America? It says they wanna go north, east you go over to the map in photoshop and you see denver here and they go oh well let's go take over whatever state this is nebraska washington <laughs> i don't know the states i'm sorry i'm good at basketball not good at geography and so what happens is you go into this state you take it over with the denver nuggets and the denver nuggets start to grow and start their map in their march on america then you go to the actual 2k rosters and you look at the players and they get a one overall boost to whoever the best player is on the team. In this case, Nikola Jokic would get the one overall boost. Now, let's say you spin the wheel and it turns out that they wanna go west and attack the Utah Jazz or whatever. That means you're gonna have a tournament, a winner take all one game elimination tournament of the Denver Nuggets at the Utah Jazz. Denver being the rolling team will be on the attack. Jazz will be the home team. And the winner of that game gets to pick up the best player from the other team as well as you get that one overall attribute boost. And if all that is too confusing for you, don't worry, just stick along, watch the video and you will pick it up in short order. The only thing is, if you may have noticed by the title, we are going to be doing all time teams. That means guys like Magic Johnson and Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, Tracy McGrady, every single team is going to have their collection of the best players in the history on their team. And we're going to be going to see who is the best team of all time in America and a little bit of Toronto as well. I don't think the Vancouver Grizzlies are going to be having a team. They're going to be technically registered as the Memphis Grizzlies. Little things like that we're not going to be able to update at this point. Maybe we'll do that in the future down the road. But let's start with the first spin of the wheel. Let's see who's going to be the first team moving in NBA imperialism for all-time teams. I don't know why this app is so broken right now. It's, it's really, like, janky, moving at two frames a second. But it looks like the Brooklyn Nets, now without Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, but maybe those guys are going to be on the all-time team, are on the move they're the first team in the nba imperialism but what direction can they really go we take a peek at the map here and i say all right um they can they can go north because i gave them this little this little uh, uh manhattan island here it's tough to put the brooklyn nets and the new york knicks in new york just because new york is i mean they're they're literally a bridge away from each other but they could take over you know connecticut rhode island if they go north they could have this little strip. What is that? New Jersey. If they want to go south, they could try to take on the Knicks if they go uh, north, northwest at all. Maybe they'll even take on the Philadelphia 76ers. But the Nets are in kind of a precarious spot. Starting with the wheel, spin the wheel. What direction are the Nets going to go? They want to go directly north, directly up, directly in that direction of, you know what? You know what? We'll give them Connecticut. I know it's really tiny here. And if the Brooklyn or the Boston Celtics logo is actually covering Rhode Island as well, just this, the East Coast is so compact. We'll give the Brooklyn Nets Connecticut. Just fill out the map a little bit, cover up a little water, cover up some of the borders. The <laughs> East Coast, man, they are just so compact out there. I don't know how they live. Have you ever tried to drive in East Coast traffic? Woo! That is going to be the first team and they're going to get the one overall boost too. I guess we'll give it to Julius Irving. Have him join the 99 overall squad. Looks like they don't have any 99 overalls on their team. Julius Irving. Oh, he's a 97 overall. I was looking at his layup skill. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dumb. All right. What do you want from me? Okay. Julius Serving now a 98 overall. Just looking at their team. They do have Jason Kidd, James Harden, I guess the shooting guard, Julius Serving, Dr. J, Kevin Durant and Brooke Lopez. Yeah, okay. All right. Interesting team. Off the bench is uh, Drazen Petrovic. Vince Carter, I remember. Kyrie Irving is uh, Richard Jefferson on this list. He is 87 overall. Richard, back in his prime, used to be a monster. Kenyon Martin, Keith Van Horn. Oh, I miss some of these guys. Okay, that is going to be the Brooklyn Nets' first move. Make sure they get off the wheel. Okay, Brooklyn Nets, thank you for playing. You are off of this list. I don't know which one of these to select. It probably doesn't matter. Next team on the wheel spinning 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 round two of nba imperialism is the minnesota timberwolves minnesota is one of these teams that always seems to end up with a ton of land but they never really play enough players to or enough teams to get a really good competitive team so they go east they got the milwaukee bucks they go north 
they got the Raptors. Other than that, they are going to be stuck with some of these states getting one overall boost. Spin the wheel. Spin the arrow. What direction? They're going northeast. Why is everyone going northeast, man? What, what, is, what is wrong with our peoples? Northeast. Don't know. Direction, that is. Is that Canada? I think it's Canada. I think they're taking on the Toronto Raptors. All right, the all-time Minnesota Timberwolves will be taking on the all-time Toronto Raptors. Taking a quick peek at the teams, you got the Timberwolves on the road with Sam Cassell as their point guard, Jimmy Butler. Y'all remember Jimmy on the Timberwolves for one season. Tom Gugliotta. I didn't think he'd make the all-time teams list. And of course, KG, Kevin Garnett, 99 overall MVP. Didn't bring a championship to Minnesota, but he was a damn good player. And Carl Anthony Towns, interestingly, is their center. Kevin Love coming off the bench. And they just got too many bigs. Stefan Marbury, Terrell Brandon, don't know him. And then Christian Leitner, Oli Zerbiak, you know, he's pretty, he's washed. He's a fake all-star, a phony. Ricky Rubio is an 86 overall. That's a little bit generous. Andrew Wiggins, Latrell Sprewell, Isaiah Ryder, interesting team. Definitely for the Raptors, you got Mr. Toronto, Kyle Lowry, back when he was good, back when he was still able to play basketball and not get hurt every single season. And DeMar DeRozan, man, has he bounced around ever since that Kawhi trade. Kawhi Leonard, of course, aforementioned, 96 overall. I don't know why they put him in that jersey for the Raptors. Christopher Bosch and Andre Bargnani is their best center. Definitely a weak spot. Vince Carter, of course. Damon Stoudemire, Pascal Siakam, apparently one of the best players already in Toronto Raptor history. Morris Peterson, T-Mac, Tracy McGrady when he was super young at this point, right? How old was T-Mac? 20 years old. Antonio Davis. There's a name I haven't heard in a while. Doug Christie? I only remember his Sacramento days. Okay. Fred Van Fleet making the list. So is Jonas Valanciunas and Serge Ibaka. Going to be one heck of a game. Here you go. Minnesota all-time Timberwolves at the Toronto all-time Raptors. Sam Cassell versus Kyle Lowry. Jimmy Buckets versus DeMar DeRozan. Tom Gugliotta versus Kawhi Leonard. Oof. Kevin Garnett versus Chris Bosh going to be fun. And Andre Bargnani versus Carl Anthony Towns. And we'll do the same thing we did the last Imperial video. We'll watch a few possessions at the beginning of the game. And hopefully the end of the game, if it's close, we'll have an epic close wire to wire game as well. Tom Gugliotta holding the ball, not doing anything with his damn life. Kicks it to Jimmy Butler in the postcard by DeMar. Two players in the NBA right now. And Jimmy Buckets misses, doesn't get his own rebound. And here comes the Raptors the other way. DeMar DeRozan facilitating for the Raptors. He's just going to go ISO. Hero ball, post up, mid-range, fade, miss. Okay, Cat tips the rebound to Jimmy Buckets. Looks like there's only two players that are actually trying to play this game. Carl Anthony Towns streaking down the court and lays it up over Andre Bargnani, getting the first points of the game for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Looks like Minnesota's jumping out to a quick lead. Close game here in the second quarter, going into the third. And we have a back and forth contest. Looks like the Raptors now up about 11 points here in a high scoring contest in the fourth quarter. Nine minutes left, about a 12 point lead. The Timberwolves are going to have to make it close. They're going to have to go on a little bit of a run. Otherwise, they are going to fall short. Looks like they are falling a little bit short. It's now a 13 point lead. One minute left. And it looks like the Toronto Raptors are going to eliminate the Minnesota Timberwolves in the first game of NBA imperialism. Chris Bosh had a very good game. 24 and 9. Kawhi Leonard with the triple double. 22, 11. 11. Vince Carter off the bench was serviceable. 21 points for him. Kyle Lowry gave you 23 and 9. DeMar DeRozan gave you 19. Damon Stoudemire gave you 15, 13. Pascal, good game for Raptors. Timbles. Kevin Garnett led the way 27 and 10. Jimmy Buckets was solid. 21, 4 and 8. Kevin Love gave you 17 and 6. Terrell Brandon. Uh, Carl Towns didn't step up. Thomas Gugliotta and Christian Leitner were probably not very good options. Who else didn't play well? Stefan Marbury, yeah, they just didn't get enough for their point guards. They did. Yeah, you know what? I think what was holding them back was Tom Gugliotta, the guy who we made fun of at the start of the entire game. So, unfortunately, it looks like the Raptors are going to take game one. And I know that Toronto's weighed on here, but they have all of Canada. That means Minnesota is gone. Good luck. Thank you for trying, but you have officially gotten eliminated in Minnesota there. Darn toot, Minnesota is now a part of Canada, according to the imperialism rules. Fill that out, make that look nice, and let's make sure the teams are off the list. Timberwolves eliminated. And I'm going to take the Raptors off too, just because they got their spin, speed it up a little bit, make sure every team gets at least one go. Also, make sure that the players get their overall boosts. No surprises here. Kevin Garnett is officially a Toronto Raptor. Looking at the team now, it's Kyle Lowry, Vince Carter, Kawhi Leonard, and Kevin Garnett. Andre Bargnani still here as well. And one thing that I did see you guys say is that you want to give the overall boost to somebody who wasn't on the team already. So Kevin Garnett going to sit here 
at the 98 overall. Unfortunately, he's the highest overall, but Kawhi Leonard or Vince Carter is going to get this one overall boost. And I'm thinking we give it to Kawhi. I think we give it to the club. You know what? No, this is an all time rebuild. This is the best of the best in the history of the game. We'll give it to Vince Carter just because he's been out of the league for a couple of years now, up to a 97 overall raptors are off the wheel timberwolves are off the wheel and let's spin it again i don't know why it's so slow it used to be smoother i think their servers are overloaded but the next team going up is the new york knickerbocker can you say that anymore is it offensive knicks and the nets of course they got the philadelphia 76ers officially to the south of them toronto is still here so is boston and then they got a couple free states over here as well i believe this is water i could be wrong because i don't know a damn thing about geography and what direction does new york want to go they will be going north that's is that toronto again is there any way i can i can fake it i think that's toronto anyway you already know who the raptors are with kevin garnett but the new york knicks they got walt frazier as the point guard alan houston as the shooting guard carmelo anthony new york mellow dave de Bouchier. i don't actually know who that is huh look how blurry his picture is and of course, the legend himself, Willis Reed, coming off the bench is Patrick Ewing, Richie Gurin. Don't know who that is. Michael Ray Richardson, Amari Stoudemire is a 90 overall. I don't know about that. Bernard King, Earl Monroe, John Starks, the legend, Dick Barnett. I love Dick. Charles Oakley and Julius Randle made his way onto the all-time Knicks team as well. This is the all-time Knicks. Walt Frazier versus Kyle Lowry, Allen Houston versus Vince Carter, Carmelo Anthony versus Kawhi Leonard. Dave DeBoschier versus Kevin Garnett and Willis Reed versus Christopher Bosch. In Toronto, New York Knicks on the attack. They're hunting Scotia Bank Arena, if you will. And Chris Bosch wins the tip. They got a big lineup out there in Toronto. Got some great wing players in Kawhi and Vince Carter. But the New York Knicks have history on their side. They have legend on their side. They have Kyle Lowry dribbling the ball, taking the screen and pulling up. From three, new look NBA Willis Reed grabs the rebound. The Knicks are going to have to play old school. They're going to have to play by two while the Raptors are playing by three. So hopefully defense wins championships. Hopefully defense wins NBA imperialism. Allen Houston pulling up for a long two. Worst shot in the NBA. Kawhi Leonard bring the ball up the court. We got another defensive masterpiece here. Kevin Garnett pulls up. Misses. Dave DeBush here picks up the ball himself. He's bringing it full court. He's got KG on him. He doesn't care and i don't know what's going on here walt frazier with the great what, what do you call that facial hair it's not sideburns draws the foul and we are not going to be watching free throws but here we have the all-time new york knicks with a weird logo i don't know why these logos are kind of like emboldened in black the knicks surprisingly jumping out to a huge lead in the first quarter is kevin garnett sandbagging this toronto raptors squad they're losing by 30 the knicks with history dominated probably the higher overall toronto raptors Kevin Garnett's a 98 overall, Vince Carter 97, Kawhi Leonard 96, and they fall tremendously short on their home court. The New York Knicks march into Canada and take it over. The Big Apple, more like the Big America. Vince Carter had a good game scoring-wise, but not really facilitating. 27 points, 6 turnovers. Chris Bosh was good, 25 and 10. Kevin Garnett, pretty quiet for the highest rated player on their team, 16 and 14. Kawhi Leonard only gave you 15, 3, 4, 2, 1. And uh, that was it. DeMar gave you nothing. Damon Stoudemire gave you nothing. Pascal Siakam as well. As for the Knicks, Willis Reed. Knicks. Willis Reed led the way 24 and 7. Patrick Ewing off the bench 20 and 9. Can you believe Patrick Ewing is coming off the bench? Ronnie Gurren was okay 20 and 5. Walt Frazier 18, 4 and 11. Great play from the point guard. Allen Houston 14. Amari Stoudemire 12 and 7. Mello, surprisingly, only four points, three rebounds, and five assists, but the New York Knicks win in impressive fashion. That means go to the map, and that means all of this land that is Toronto, that is Canada, is going to be officially New York Nick Orange. That's a lot of land, man. New York is marching across lakes. They're saying, Toronto, gone. Get off the map. We are going to be taken over. We are the masters of the North, and hopefully they will be masters of America as well. So I'm looking at the Knicks, of course. Kevin Garnett's a 98 overall. Get him on the team. He immediately takes over. But they already got Willis Reed and Patrick Ewing. I'm thinking we give him the one overall boosted now 97 overall Vince Carter to start at the shooting guard. So they with it, they would go Walt Frazier, Vince Carter, Carmelo Anthony, Willis Reed, Patrick Ewing. So sorry, Kevin Garnett. We are going for the other bald man on Toronto. And he's going now to New York, to the Big Apple. Doesn't it feel like Vince Carter should have been a New York Nick? Taking over for... Is Dick Barnett. Gotta say goodbye to Dick. You know, I hate to do it. 
but Dick is gone, and now Walt Frazier going to be getting an overall boost. He is up to a 98 overall. New York Knicks, thank you for spinning. Get this man off my team, and we'll be spinning for the next team now that the New York Knicks have done everything that they need, and it is going to be the Philadelphia 76ers. Man, we love the East Coast out there. What is going on? So Philly, you can see right here, they got Washington to the south. They got, what is this, Virginia, West Virginia, North Virginia, whatever, as well to the south. Cleveland Cavaliers to the west. Brooklyn Nets, probably not going to be able to take them on. They could take on the Knicks if they go north. And then they have this little Delaware-ish looking state. Spin the area. Spin the area. Spin the arrow. Fill it. Philadelphia 76ers. And they're going kind of southwest-ish. 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 Is there a world where I can give them West Virginia? I don't think so. I think that's Cleveland. I think the Philadelphia 76ers are looking to march on to Cleveland because there's no way that this is more south to where I can, yeah. Yeah, the Philadelphia at Cleveland, going to be the next matchup. Of course, the 76ers are no strangers to incredible basketball players. They got Allen Iverson, the answer himself, 98 overall at the point guard position, even though he's more of a shooting guard. Al Greer starting at the two. That's interesting. Billy Cunningham, the legend. What, what year was he drafted? 1965. Y'all ever seen any Billy Cunningham basketball games? Dolph Shays. And Moses Malone playing the center position. Of course, Julius Irving, Wilt the Stilt Chamberlain, only a 94 overall in Philadelphia. And Joel Embiid, just a ridiculous number of centers. And of course, the doctor himself. Bobby Jones, Andre Iguodala? I don't know about that. George McGinnis, Doug Collins, uh, Hersey Hawkins, Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons made the all-time Philadelphia 76ers list. Oh, man. And Mo Cheeks. But of course, the all time Cleveland Cavaliers are led by Mark Price and Kyrie Irving and of course LeBron James Goat James is on 99 overall yeah he's gonna be a tough matchup he's gonna go to any team Kevin Love made the team and somehow Brad Dougherty is here Zildrunas Elgowskis a lot of people forgot how good he was back in his prime Larry Nance Sr. Terrell Brandon World Be Free <laughs> okay Austin Carr Campy Russell Hot Rod Williams Anderson Verjaus at 85 overall I don't know about that. Jim Jones and Bingo Smith, the final players on this team. Allen the answer, Iverson versus Mark Price, Hal Greer versus Kyrie Irving, Billy Cunningham versus LeBron James, Dolph Shays versus Kevin Love, and Moses Malone versus Brad Dougherty. Here at the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse in Cleveland, Moses Malone wins the tip, and Allen the answer, Iverson, is going to be bringing the ball up the court. It's always good and fun to see Allen Iverson playing. I know he was an undersized shooting guard. I know he's a bit controversial, but man, Allen Iverson is probably top three of my favorite players of all time. As he just drills a three, he pulls up. Nobody guards him at Allen. Oh my gosh. Y'all seen that crossover on Michael Jordan, but did y'all ever... You see the way his jersey just flowed. He sagged it quite a bit. He just looked cool, and he... Ooh, LeBron kicks it to an open Kyrie Irving to answer for three, and we gotta... This would be a fun match to watch, but we're gonna be hopping into SimCast. Allen Iverson versus Kyrie Irving and LeBron James. The Philadelphia 76 is jumping out to an early lead, interestingly enough, even though LeBron James is supposedly the best player in the NBA. Looks like it's a 30, maybe a 40-point game here as the Cleveland Cavaliers are getting absolutely spanked. Don't know what happened, but LeBron James going down in flames. Ramen accidentally as the Philadelphia 76ers pull out a 44-point W. 154-110. LeBron was serviceable, 25, 7, and 7. Kyrie Irving gave you a 17 on 16 shots. Mark Price, pretty quiet. Terrell Brandon, pretty quiet. World be free. Zildrunas Silgaskis. The depth of the Cavaliers was just not there. As the 76ers balled out, Moses Malone, 30 and 7. AI, 28 and 10. He's facilitating. He got five steals. Joe LMB gave you 25, 3, and 3. Dolph Shaves gave you a 23 and 8. Julius Irving gave you 15. Billy Cunningham gave you a 14 and 10 and locked down LeBron James and Wilt the Stilt only gave you 11 points. Can you believe Wilt Chamberlain only gave you an 11 and five games, but the 76ers stomped all thanks to Ben Simmons. Philadelphia 76ers roll. Cavaliers, goodbye. And make sure we look nice here. Beautify it a little bit. Did not mean to press that button. I wanted this one. And there you go. Philadelphia 76ers taking over Ohio, and they are starting to look beastly as well. All these all-time teams just have so many good players. No surprises, LeBron James going to be a Philadelphia 76er. And you know what? Let's have him take over Ben Simmons as his place because Ben Simmons is better than LeBron James. Ben Simmons is the second coming of LeBron James. Ben Simmons is LeBron 2.0, but LeBron already in the 99 overall club 
no overall boost for him. And I know Moses Malone is the legend, but I got to give the one overall vault. One overall boost to Allen, the answer, Iverson, just because he's my favorite player. So he's a 97, Moses Malone a 97, LeBron James a 99. They got a pretty beastly looking squad here. Do need to fill out the shooting guard position. Maybe try to upgrade from Dolph Shays, but the centers, I mean, they're more than set. Small forward, they're set. Andre Iguodala. Ooh. <laughs> and the Cleveland Cavaliers have been eliminated from NBA imperialism. The spinner gets thinner. Next on the list. Over the wheel spinning in slow five frames per second is going to be the utah jazz with a pretty storied franchise of their own now looking at utah what direction can the jazz go pull this up here boom 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 i didn't undo this denver nuggets that's that's fine that's fine let me just paint this real quick everybody knows that the denver nuggets haven't played yet so they're gonna sit right here get a little bit smaller as well because they haven't beat nobody yet but the utah jazz it could take on the phoenix suns to the south they could take on the denver nuggets to the east they could take over nevada could go north there's a whole bunch of directions that the utah jazz can go let's spin the wheel spinning 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 and it's going they're going right after utah i mean they're going after uh the denver nuggets they're saying you know what we want to take over denver colorado taking a peek at these rosters and john stockton is a 98 overall pretty impressive pistol pete maravich 96 overall just could not stop drinking Adrian Daintley's a 93 overall. Carl Malone, man, does he love kids. 98 overall. Mark Eaton, 90 overall. Andre Kirilenko, AK-47, is a 91 overall. Gordon Hayward, an 89. I don't know about that. Donovan Mitchell, Carlos Boozer, Rudy Gobert makes the list. Look how young Rudy looks back here. This is before he knew that everybody was going to hate because he could not play offense to save his life. Daryl Griffith, Deron Williams. Remember when he was in conversation with Chris Paul as the best point guard in the league? Ooh, Truck Robinson. Thurl Bailey, these are names I don't know. Jeff Hornacek made the list as well. And nine-man rotation. Other than that, we're not going to be changing anything. As for the Nuggets, they got Fat Lever, David Thompson, Carmelo Anthony, Dan Issel, Nikola Jokic, Alex English is only on the bench. They have The, the Nuggets definitely have a storied history, but they do not. Wow, Allen Iverson, 91 overall on this team. They do not have a recent notable players other than Melo and Nikola Jokic, of course. Dikembe Mutombo, was he on Denver? Really? Well, if we got to do some research. I don't remember him on Denver. I remember, I guess he started in Denver, then went to Atlanta. I remember those days. I remember the one year in Philadelphia when he was with Allen Iverson and New Jersey. Don't really remember that. The Knicks, then he ended up in Houston for the rest, uh, the rest of his career. I guess he was Denver. Wow, I don't remember that at all, but that was way too long ago than in the early 90s how many y'all were even born by then you can't be matumbo byron beck Ma mahmoud abdul raouf he used to be a monster back in the day and the nba blackballed him i think kiki vandaway chauncey billups king chauncey on denver before he got traded away antonio mcdice marcus canby jamal murray made the list it'll be a heck of a matchup john stockton versus fat lever pistol pete maravich versus david thompson Melo versus adrian danley carl malone versus dan isle and nicole Jokic versus mart eaton I think the Jazz have the depth on their side. That's what I would give them as the overwhelming advantage. But other than that, I think this is going to be a really competitive game. And I have, well, the Denver Nuggets are at home. But, you know, let's go Jazz. They got 298 overalls on the team. And, of course, Pete Maravich is unstoppable as he lays the ball up easily. And don't forget, Nikola Jokic can't play defense. Carmelo Anthony bringing the ball up the court. He's going to look to be an offensive weapon. Really all offense, no defense here for the Nuggets. Kicking it to Easel who dribbles and he's got Carl Malone on him. He's going to operate out of the post. Carmelo Anthony gets the ball. This is a really unfruitful possession. Melo just pulling up contested and he misses. And it looks like the Utah Jazz are going to start this game off strong. Hopping into Simcast and the first quarter, the Jazz jump out to a huge lead going into the second quarter. The Nuggets, their players are just too old. They're like, oh, we're from the 70s and we're from the 80s. We only score two points at a time while everybody in the Jazz score three points at a time. Not really, but the Jazz are just blowing out the Nuggets. And this is yet another blowout. We haven't seen a close game yet. I haven't had to hop in and watch somebody actually score as the Jazz are going to win 140 to 115. Just another dominant performance. David Thompson gave you 29. Dan Isil gave you 19. Alex English gave you 19. Allen Iverson, a reduced version of AI on Denver, gave you 18 and 8. Melo only gave you 15. The Joker only gave you 5, 5, and 11. I don't know why, but Simulation hates Nikola Jokic. As for the Jazz, Carmelo was great. Pistol Pete, 26 and 11. John Stockton, 25 and 11. And seven steals. Adrian Dantley gave you 23. And Gordon Hayward gave you a 17. 
How did Andre Kirilenko do? Mr. Uh, Quintuple five. Uh, seven points, six rebounds, three assists, two steals, one block, two turnovers. Andre Kirilenko is just such a fun player to root for. Jazz winning in convincing fashion means I think I'm going to send Carmelo Anthony over from the Nuggets. We're going to have Melo replacing Jeff Hornacek, unfortunately. So the all-time Jazz roster is now going to be John Stockton, Pete Maravich, Carmelo Anthony, Carl Malone, and Mark Eaton. Definitely a monster squad there as well. And who do we give the one overall boost to? Do you give it to the, the nutcase or the uh, the criminal? It's, it's really tough. You know, do you want to give it to R. Kelly or do you want to give it to J.K. Rowling? I think we're going to go... I'm going to go John Stockton. They're, it's a pretty close race. You could really give it to either one. But John Stockton going to be the 98 overall boost. Carl Malone, 97. Melo, 95 now on the Utah Jazz. And of course, that means Denver is officially gone. Get off this list as the Utah Jazz build their empire. Or at least the beginnings of it. And Utah going to get a little bit of a logo boost as well. Looking nice there, Utah taking over Middle America. A whole bunch of empty space here. So they're going to get a lot of overall bumps. I assume Carl Malone and John Stockton going to get into the 99 overall clubs at some point. And the Nuggets officially eliminated. The spinner gets thinner. And we're going to go for one more spin here. Next team on the attack, on the offensive, is going to be the Dallas Mavericks. Okay, looking at the Mavericks, what direction would they realistically go? They're kind of trapped in Texas here. You got the Rockets to the southeast. You got the Spurs to the southwest. You got the Thunder to the north. Theoretically, you could go after the Pelicans or you could take over Arizona here. The Dallas is in definitely a weird spot with respect to NBA imperialism. So we're going to be spinning them. Spin the wheel. Dallas is going. They just going straight north. They said, you know what? Damn, Texas. We're going after the Oklahoma City Thunder. And the Thunder are going to have a pretty good squad because if y'all remember, they are formerly the Seattle Supersonics. Looking at the former Sonics, now Thunder, they got Gary Payton at the point guard. Ray Allen as a shooting guard. I forgot Ray Allen was on the Sonics. He used to be so good. Kevin Durant, of course, one of the best players in the history of basketball at the small forward position. Sean Kemp before he became Sean Klump. And Jack Sigma as their center. Definitely an upgradable part because look at that hair. I would upgrade on that hair in a heartbeat. Good Lord. Prime Russell Westbrook. MVP Russell Westbrook back when he could shoot, back when he made free throws, back when he was in a nutcase. Paul George only had one season here, but he's on the list. Dennis Johnson, Spencer Haywood, Rashad Lewis, Gus Williams, Fred Brown, Dale Ellis, Detlef Shrimp, Xavier McDaniel. Okay. As for the Mavericks, they of course have Luka Doncic because he's the best thing that's ever happened to basketball. Already a 94 overall. Jim Jackson. Not great. Neither is Mark Aguirre, but they, of course, have Dirk Nowitzki, the GOAT, who's a 99 overall at this point. James Donaldson, Derek Harper, Jamal Mashburn, R R R R R Rolando Blackman, Michael Finley made the list. 88's a little bit generous for Mike. I like him. Jason Kidd, back when he was super old. How old is he? 23? Oh, that's right. He started in Dallas, then went to uh, those other teams, and then ended back up in Dallas. Steve Nash, same thing as well. Jason Terry, the Jet. Baron Davis, no, Brad Davis and Tyson Chandler. Sean Bradley running this out. Unfortunate news of what happened to Sean Bradley. Another really good matchup. It looks like the Thunder or the Supersonics formerly have a little bit more depth while the Dallas Mavericks have the all-time highs. They got Luka Doncic. They got Dirk Nowitzki while the Thunder have more balance. Gary Payton, Ray Allen, Detlef Shrepp. Of course, Russell Westbrook coming off the bench. I think the Thunder... Formerly, Supersonics are going to win this one easily, but you never know. This is why it's a one-off round-robin tournament. Is it round-robin? I don't think it's round-robin. But winner-take-all, one game at a time. Jim Jackson almost gets an over-and-back call on the first possession, but it looks like he gets it too. I don't know who this guy is. And he misses Kevin Durant grabbing the rebound, of course, the seven-foot monster. Smoothest unblockable jump shot in the NBA. Gary Payton. Pulls up? No, okay. That would have been a really bad possession. Don't know what's going on here. Gary Payton just throws the ball away like an idiot. Mark Aguirre bringing the ball up the court the other way. Picked up by Kevin Durant. And uh, they're going to the post. Jim Jackson going to operate? No, Dirk. Man, Dirk Nowitzki. Watch some Dirk highlights. Every year or so, I go back and watch the, uh, the NBA mini movies of Dirk Nowitzki taking on the Heat. It's just so inspirational. Dirk taking on Goat James, taking on Dwayne Wade. He's just a fan favorite, man. Kevin Durant looks like he was going to pull up, but he doesn't. Sean Klump has the ball, kicks it out. No good offense is being run at this point. We're almost a minute in, and nobody has even tried to score. Allen dribbling the ball, posts it up to Jack Sigma on Luka Doncic. Got a size mismatch here. White on white. And there you go. The first points of the game is a unimpressive jump hook. 
going into Simcast and the Thunder jump out to a lead in the first quarter. Like I said, the Mavericks have the star power, but the Thunder have the depth. And of course, they have their own stars as well. Oh, I completely Ooh. fucked that up, but it looks like it was a close one. And the Thunder win 121-113. Sean Kemp led the way with 20 points, 6 rebounds, 3 assists. Paul George, 19, 2, and 3. Kevin Durant gave you 16, 8, and 5. Gary Payton, 15, 5, and 6. No steals. Gabe Russell gave you a 14, 4, and 10. Spencer Haywood, 12. Jack Sigma, 11. As for the Mavericks, Dirk only gave you 19 and 7. That's not what you want to see. Luka only gave you 17, but he gave you 7 and 8. Mark Aguirre, 14. Just not a lot of scoring in this one. As the Mavericks fall to the Thunder, 121-113. And unfortunately, say goodbye, Dallas, as it looks like this blue is going to become a Thunder burnt orange. There we go. Beautify this a little bit. Make it look nice. And there you go. Thunder. It really the Supersonics. We should put the Sonics logo here. Man, bring a basketball team back to Seattle. But the Thunder logo gets huge. They're going to be starting to take over Texas. Dirk Nowitzki going to be going over. He's the highest rated overall player. 98 overall at this point. To the Thunder formerly Supersonics. I know I keep saying that, but it's just so apparent when you look at these all-time players. Like half of them either played on the Sonics and Kevin Durant. I think Russell Westbrook, I don't think he played on the Sonics. But, you know, Gary Payton, Ray Allen, Sean Kemp, all these guys were former Sonic players. So the team is going to look like Gary Payton, Ray Allen, Kevin Durant, Dirk Nowitzki, and Jack Sigma. If they can improve and get a legit center, somebody like a Shaquille O'Neal, this team is going to be a favorite to win it all. They are just so ridiculously stacked already. And the Mavericks get, bam, off the spinner. The spinner gets Thinner. Next team on the list as we spin the wheel is going to be the Magic or the Lakers. Connect up in the Shaquille O'Neal trade. It looks like the Orlando Magic. And they're kind of in a precarious spot if you look at them on the map. We go over to the Magic and we see that they got the Miami Heat to the south. They got Atlanta to the north. Theoretically, they have state that I don't know. Uh, I'm not buying time as I tell you it's Alabama, obviously. You know, they could go Georgia. They could go Alabama depending on how the direction of the arrow goes north, north-ish. But let's give it a shot. Let's give it a peek and let's spin the arrow. Bam. What direction are the Magic going to go with the storied franchise of their own? They, you can't you can't go that way. Just, you, you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Orlando. You can't do that. That's not even the Gulf of Mexico. That's just the Atlantic Ocean. So this is what I was saying. Alabama's just waiting to be taken. I know we could theoretically put them in another matchup against the Atlanta Hawks. I want to give the Orlando Magic an overall boost. And that means probably Shaquille O'Neal going to be joining a 99 overall club go over to this magic squad for the first time they got tracy mcgrady 95 overall penny hardaway 94 dwight howard is actually higher rated than shack mm, i know they have the same overall but dwight howard's name comes first i don't know about that really i really i really disagree i think shack even though he was still super young in the magic days is more dominant grant hill nikola vucevic made the list anyways tracy mcgrady turns out he's the highest overall magic player gonna be a 96 overall orlando magic gonna be marching north out of florida seeing what they can take over as this team of course they're gonna have to fight the face of the miami heat it's just it's 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 an unwinnable situation for the miami heat they're really just stuck here down in the southern part of florida thank you magic next team on the list next team on the offensive is going to be the blazers or the warriors it looks like it's going to be the golden state warriors and we're gonna start to hit of california here look at california you got the sacramento kings to the uh to the east you got the portland trailblazers to the north and of course you have the los angeles lakers although it's not as bad as the clippers i had to give them this tiny little section here because unfortunately la has just dominated southern california by the lakers there's no chance that the clippers are more popular than lakers are at this point so what direction you want to go golden state of course have a storied franchise of their own recent memory they're incredible in the history they were also incredible they have wilt chamberlain baron davis taking down the one seeded dallas mavericks it can't go that way golden state you can't again that's the pacific ocean you just you can't do that they're going to go it looks north to me that looks that looks pretty portland trail blazery i don't think there's a way to go get around that looks like golden state warriors are going to be at your portland trail blazers of course you know most of the names on the golden state warriors you got stephanie curry here MVP Steph, look how young he looked back in the day. Clay Thompson back when he was the best two-way player in the NBA. Rick Barry is going to be playing the three. That's interesting. Look how old that picture is. He's drafted in 1965. Kevin Durant, no surprises. And Wilt Chamberlain, 99 overall. Rocking the Philadelphia 76er jersey. That doesn't make sense. Chris Mullen is a 94 overall. Not sure about that. Nate Thurmond. Baron Davis mentioned him. Paul Arizon. Tim Hardaway. I didn't know Tim Hardaway was on the 
on the Warriors. Of course, Draymond Green, only an 89 overall, kind of slept on. Sleepy Floyd, speaking of. <laughs> Jason Richardson, Purvis Short, Andre Iguodala up to an 85 overall, probably a little underappreciated as well. As for your Portland Trailblazers, no surprises here. Damian Lillard looking surprised. What is this picture? <laughs> it's like, oh my God. You guys, have you seen the latest Fortnite skin? It's me. Oh, I'm so surprised. Clyde the Glide Drexler, 97 overall. Kiki Vandaway, Mo Lucas, and Bill Walton, 96 overall. For that, was it one dominant season he had here in Portland? Lamarcus Aldridge is a 90 overall. Arvita Serbonis, pretty monstrous himself. Terry Porter, Sydney Wicks. Blazers are more of a storied franchise where they their more recent players aren't as good as their past players or Jeff Petrie, Zach Randolph, 87 overall. Hmm. Hmm. Don't know about that. Zach Randolph was a monster, but not for the Blazers, I don't think. CJ McCollum, only an 86. Jim Paxson, Kevin Duckworth. You already know what direction I think this is going, but you got Stephanie Curry versus Damian Lillard, Clay Thompson versus Clyde, the Glad Drexler, Rick Berry versus Kiki Vandaway, Kevin Durant versus Malukas, and Wilt Chamberlain versus Bill Walton. I expect the Warriors to romp, roll, completely dominate this game, but you never know. It's a one-off. 2K is as 2K does. I'm surprised Yusuf Nurkic didn't make the list as well. Stephanie Curry bringing the ball up. Man, having Steph Curry and then Wilt Chamberlain grab rebounds, set screens for you, that must be just a menacing duo, let alone Klay Thompson. And I completely forgot Kevin Durant. Klay's just jacking up threes. He said, screw the system, screw everything. I'm going to be my own man. And I'm gonna try to score more points than Clyde Drexler. All right, that's 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 an idea. Going into the post, Bill Walton on Steph Curry. I don't think this is a fair matchup as Bill just puts it right up and over Steph Curry. This is way before he even became a moderately okay defender. Going into the first quarter though, Warriors have a lead going into the second quarter. Not too bad. I'm gonna try not to overstimulate so that we can hop in and watch if this game is close, which it looks like it is. The West Coast teams are battling it out. Warriors have about a seven point lead, five point lead here in the third quarter. Hopping into the fourth quarter, it's about a 12-point lead. Maybe the Blazers go a little bit on a run, but they're down 14, 15, 12, 13, 10, 12. It's just not close enough. It's a 10-point game. There's still three minutes left, and it looks like the Warriors are going to be victorious yet again by about 15 points here, 131, 120. Damian Lillard, 34, 1, and 8. Three steals for him. Bill Walton was pretty monstrous, 21 and 11. By Drexler, 20 and 11. But that's really it for... The Blazers, because Stephanie Curry had a good game, 27 and 7. Wilt does still 20 and 11. Chris Mullen, 17 and 7. Kevin Durant only gave you 13 points on seven shots. Baron Davis, 12 and 9 off the bench. All of reason, 12. Nate Thurman, 11. Clay Thompson only gave you 10. They just have so much history on their side. Do the Golden State Warriors as they win easily. And Golden, nope, that's the wrong button. Golden State going to be taking over the West Coast here. And unfortunately, the Portland Trail Blazers are gone get the hell off this list as the golden state warriors logo grows pretty massively and i can't see it behind their colors we need to fix that let's fix that yeah we'll do we'll do more of a glow but there you go golden state warriors taking over the west coast that means clyde drexler is going to go over to the golden state warriors and probably take over clay thompson spots you got steph curry clyde drexler kevin durant draymond green and wilt chamberlain we've taken a power forward maybe we've taken bill walton and rocked a double big lineup with Will Chamberlain, that's certainly a possibility. That's an opportunity, but I think I'd rather have Clyde Drexler here at the two. And then Draymond Green, or whoever they put in, maybe Chris Mullen, is going to be serviceable as the power forward. And we could give it to Kevin Durant, but I feel like Mr. Golden State will give Steph Curry the one overall bump up to a 98 overall as well. That means Trailblazers are officially gone off the list as the spinner gets Thinner, thank you so much for playing Portland, but unfortunately you got to go. And that means the next team on the list is going to be the Atlanta Hawks. All right, going back east. So you look at them, we had the magic kind of dance around them, try to avoid them. So they do have to take on the magic if they go south or if they go west at all. They do have this, I guess, South Carolina. Is that the state I'm looking at? Charlotte's in North Carolina. That's got to be South Carolina. Looks like Superman's logo if you ask me. They got South Carolina to the east. They got Charlotte, theoretically, if it's like this tiny little sliver here north. And then, of course, they have the Memphis Grizzlies as well. Probably going to be the Magic, all things being equal. But let's see what direction do the Hawks want to go. Spin the wheel, and they're going... Uh, I don't know about that. You can't go that way. Where's that Where's that SpongeBob meme? How many times do I have to tell you, old man? You can't go that way. All right, they're going northwest. I like having my 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 imperialism take funny shapes. I feel like it just makes it a little more interesting. So instead of taking on the magic, 
We're going to have him go after Memphis. The Atlanta Hawks all-time history is going to go after the Vancouver Grizzlies and the Memphis Grizzlies history of basketball. Taking a quick peek at the teams, you got Treyeth Young at the point guard position for the Hawks, best in the history. Steve Smith, 87 overall. Dominique Wilkins, 95 overall. Bob Pettit, man, how old is this picture? Drafted 1954. And Dikembe Mutombo. Cliff Hagen coming off the bench with Lou Hudson. I don't know who these players are. Joe Caldwell, not to be confused with Jim Caldwell. Look at his face. He's just so excited. Doc Rivers, the non-head coach, the player, before he went to Boston, maybe after. Iso Joe made the list 89 overall. Paul Millsap, Pistol Pete Maravich with his <laughs> god hair. Look at that thing. Kevin Willis, Josh Smith made the list. Al Horford, Big Al was on the team, if y'all remember. And looking at the all-time Grizzlies, you got John Moore and... I guess he is the best point guard now. He's like a 93 overall, even though he loves pointing guns at people. Tony Allen. Interesting. Second, or I guess the best shooting guard. Shane Battier. Yeah, the Grizzlies do not have a storied franchise here. Of course, Zach Randolph and Pau Gasol, as well as Marc Gasol, just monstrous big men. Or the Memphis, also known as Vancouver Grizzlies. Memphis, Mike Conley, an 89 overall. Michael Bibby, 86 overall. Overall, is White Chocolate on the list? Sharif Abdul-Rahim was a monster as well. Bryant Reeves, there he is. White Chocolate, Jason Williams, just happy to be here. The first man to ever do the behind-the-back elbow pass. Rudy Gay, back when he was good. Jonas Valanciunas was on the team for a couple seasons. Jared Jackson Jr. made the list. And so did Mike Miller and Greg Anthony. Yeah, not a great team. Uh, I think the Hawks should dominate this, but you never know. You know, the Grizzlies are the home team. Hawks are the attacking team. Team Trey Young can play defense, a couple things to pay attention to, but here you have it. This is uh, Pau Gasol versus, I think, to Kevin Mutombo. That's his name, right? Ja Morant, though, bringing the ball to court. No surprises here, as that is what Ja looks like in real life. Only an 89 overall on the all time teams, though, as he dribbles and shoots and misses. That was pretty ugly. To Kevin Mutombo brings the ball to court, kicks it to Dominique Wilkins. Going to be the star of future videos for a while. Dominique gets the foul on Shane Battier, who is apparently. In the starting lineup for the Grizzlies. Not really what you want to see. Honestly, they probably have better players on their team right now than Shane Battaglia. No offense. As they're dropping 50 points here, they're just getting blown out. Another one of those blowouts. And uh, they had a 44-point third quarter. All right, they're making a little bit of a comeback here. Nine-point game, seven-point game, five minutes left. The Hawks still have the lead, but they are marching. They are cruising. Look at this 27-point fourth quarter. And they're going to make this close. We're going to hop in with about two minutes left. If they make it any closer, it's 122 to one. 17. Looks like Memphis Mike is rocking the point guard position for the Grizzlies here. They got Pau Gasol, Zach Randolph, Shane Battier, and Tony Allen. John Moran has been benched. Mike Conley versus Trey Young. That's just a fun matchup. Mike goes right around. Floater misses. Oof, they really needed that in the Hawks now with a seven point lead. Have the ball. I don't know who Hagen is trying to school a Shane Battier. He's not going to do that. Pau Gasol flies in for the re. Y'all remember how good Pau Gasol used to be back in the day? He's just such a soft player at times. It was frustrating because he's a Hall of Fame caliber player at times, and then he's not. Anyway, Mike Conley dribbling the ball, just going around Trey Young. Trey cannot play defense. Mike with deep post position, or Powell with deep post position, but the ball gets thrown directly to Dikembe Mutombo. That is two missed possessions in a row. He can bring the ball up the court, passing it. Bob Pettit right here, right under the hoop, kicks it out. Dikembe Mutombo obviously can't shoot. Trey Young contested three. And he misses. Pau Gasol grabs the rebound. The, the Memphis Grizzlies need a bucket. They haven't scored in 46 minutes. They're going to need it, and they need it fast. Conley, once again, I swing up. They're trying to do this entry pass, and they yet again throw it away. That is the second possession in the row. The exact same results. Mike Conley just turns the ball over, trying to throw it in to Pau Gasol. Trey Young trying to ISO. Looks like he does. Almost took the shot. Now he kicks it. Is that Josh Smith that's in the starting lineup? That's probably not what you want to see. And Hagen once again has the ball. Don't know who this man is. Shoot, pump fake, shot, miss. There is still a glimmer of hope, but the Grizzlies need a three, a stop, and another three at this point. And it looks like nothing is happening. And Mike Conley just threw the ball away again. Mike Conley with three turnovers in a row to close out this game as the Grizzlies fall 126 120. Pow was good. 27 and 20. I mean, I will take that in an all time Legends game. Mike Conley, oh my God, 22 points. You go, okay. Four rebounds. You're like, all right. Eight assists. Okay. Six turnovers. Three in the clutch. That was what really cost them the game. And maybe John Morant should have been in hindsight 2020. Shane Battier, Zach Randolph, just not a great team, honestly. 
from the Grizzlies. As for the Hawks, Dominique Wilkins, 28 and 3. Bob Pettit, 18 and 16. Trey Young gave you 16 and 7. Steve Smith was incredible, apparently, 15 and 8. That's right, Steve Smith, not Josh Smith. Josh, he's not in the starting lineup. I don't know why I thought that. Cliff Hagen, I still don't know who you are. When were you drafted? 1953. Is it my fault? I don't know guys drafted in 1953. <laughs> Doc Rivers gave you 13 and 7. Dikembe Mutombo 12 and 8. Iso Joe was a DNP. And the Hawks go on and advance Memphis Grizzlies all. And fill this out a little bit. Atlanta getting their own funny shaped corner of America. And the Memphis Grizzlies are gone. Thank you, Memphis. Thank you, Vancouver, for coming. But unfortunately, you were not good enough i mean you look at this grizzly squad they only have 190 overall and that was pal gasol who gave them a 27 and 20 game the rest were you know good players white chocolate shane battier tony allen but they're not you know legendary all-time greats players so that's why they lost to the hawks i'm gonna send over the center even though they already have one in pal gasol because he was just absolutely monstrous and theoretically you know we could play pow at the at the four maybe drop bob pettit down and drop dominique wilkins down you know what? I'm going to do that. I know we don't normally change these rosters up too much, but just because it works, Pau Gasol going to play the power forward position. Bob Pettit going to play the small forward power forward position. And Dominique Wilkins is going to be the shooting guard. So they do need an upgrade at the point guard position. Unfortunately, no offense to Trey Young or uh, or whoever they want to start, Doc Rivers. But Dominique, Cliff Hagen, Pau Gasol, the Kembe Mutombo, certainly an interesting squad here. And of course, Dominique Wilkins is going to get that one overall boost up to a 96 overall memphis grizzlies off the map bam and the spinner gets thinner next team on the list is this spins so incredibly slowly it's slowing down my computer that's how broken it is is the boston celtics storied franchise of course looking at the celtics on the map and uh they got a bunch of places they can go you got rhode island you got vermont you got new hampshire you got maine theoretically so what direction do we want to take the boston celtics it doesn't seem like they're going to be playing anybody immediately they're kind of in an unfortunate spot when it comes to NBA imperialism, but they're going northeast, which they can't really go. Look northeast. We're going to have to give them uh, whatever state that is that I'm not buying time to look up on this map here that I have is New Hampshire. Yeah, we'll give them New Hampshire. That seems that seems fair, and they can get a one overall boost. They have such a storied franchise already. Do they really need to go in and compete in the first round? Probably not. So bam, get a little color action there. And they got a weird little erection of a state going here for the Boston Celtics. Make sure they get their overall boost. Looking at the all-time Celtics, Larry Bird's only a 98. He should be a 99 overall. Bill Russell also should be a 99 overall. Bob Cousy, John Havlicek, Kevin McHale. We'll give it to, we'll give it to Larry Legend. 99 overall officially. Larry the Jet Bird. That's not his name. Alrighty then. Next on the wheel is going to be the pace it is the pacers in what direction should we be sending the pacers in looking at the map look how big this new york knicks ball is the knicks have big balls pacers one of those teams that are kind of squished between a whole bunch of teams so they got the bulls to the west they got the 76ers now to the east they got the pistons to the north so the only direction they could go without playing somebody is south taking over that state that i totally know what state is that is or do you ask well let me tell you it is kentucky 100 percent kentucky <laughs> anyway Looking at the arrow, what direction do the Pacers eventually decide to go? They go mm, kind of in between. I think that 76ers, though, again, which is not ideal. I'd like them to take on the Pistons, but it looks like it's going to be Pacers at 76ers. Not going to say this is going to be a complete mismatch, but checking out this Pacers squad here. You got Freddie Lewis at the one. Nah, Victor Oladipo at the two. Nah, Paul George at the three. That's respectable. I'll give you that. Bob Nitaliki. Natoliki, I don't even know who you are, sir. 1967 at the four. Mel Daniels at the five. Jermaine O'Neal coming off the bench. George McGinnis was okay. Danny Granger. I mean, if Danny Granger is on your team's all-time players list, you got a problem. Ron Artest. Man, Ron Artest, when he was in his prime, used to be so good. Chuck Person. Then he started hitting people. Don Busey. Rick Smits. DeMontis Sabonis made the list. Roy Hibbert. Uh -huh and Mark Jackson. I can see Mark Jackson. Totally fine with that. The rest is just uh, not going to be a great squad, but here you are. Pacers at the 76ers. Freddie Lewis versus Allen Iverson. Oof. Victor Oladipo versus Julius Irving. Oof. Paul George versus LeBron James. You always know who won that back in the day. Bob Nedelicki and Dolph Shays, two players that I don't really know, and Mel Daniels versus Moses Malone. Likely to be 
a blow up. But once again, I say it the first time, I'll say it again. You never know because NBA 2K23 is wild. It's weird. And here you go, Allen Iverson bringing the ball up to court for your Philadelphia 76ers. And not a lot happening here, kicking it. I moved Dr. J to the two, so LeBron James is playing the three, Allen Iverson playing the one. I feel like it got more 90 overalls on the team as we just get a foul in the first shot. And I'm not even going to watch that because the 76ers are going to win by 47 points going into the first quarter with the lead. Back and forth game here in the second quarter, and the Pacers actually have a little bit of lead. Now, wow, look at this third quarter. The 76ers are absolutely romping and rolling. Going into the fourth, and this is a lot closer than I expected. 97 to 85. Pacers go on a little bit of run cut into this deficit. It'll be a close game, and maybe they'll have a chance to win. Probably not going to happen, though. Seven-point game, five-point game here, three minutes left. And you know what? This is a close game. 105-102. Wilt Chamberlain inbounding the ball. This was way closer than I expected, and I got to give credit where credit is due. Also, why is my audio not working? Game, do you have audio? Game, game. The audio's just gone. Uh, I think I have to restart the PS5, and that's going to be a whole nother problem. Maybe I have to restart my computer. That's going to be a whole nother problem. You know what? We're just going to watch this without audio. I'll put in some some really hilarious music as Joel Embiid throws it down over McDaniels. Look at Joel Embiid, the process, the monster, wearing a headband, yamming it. And the 76ers jump out to a five-point lead, two and a half minutes left. Paul George bringing the ball up the other way, and they need a timeout. Uh, yeah, I was playing with settings there. Jermaine and Neil just dunked the ball. Uh, I don't know why there's no audio. I've pressed so many buttons. There's so many things that I have to keep track of. Now my PC is failing too. It's frustrating, to say the least. But hey, you never know. It's a three-point game. Philadelphia 76ers versus the Indiana Pacers. 107-104. Still two and a half minutes left. Been a really low-scoring contest as LeBron James jacks up a three, but he missed. You know, LeBron James not known for his three-point shooting. Daniels is going to pass the ball to Paul George. No, he's just dribbling the ball around. And Paul George now has the ball guarded by the better wing player and LeBron James, at least in the overalls department. Allen Iverson trying to D up and Paul George going around. Doesn't quite. Daniels has the step, draws the foul, gets the and one on Wilt Chamberlain as he's about to have the opportunity to tie this game up. The Pacers are on upset alert right now. Whoo! Do you believe in miracles? Will Chamberlain in shock. Daniels makes the free throw and it is tied up. Two minutes left. 107, 107 here in the Wells Fargo Center. LeBron James in disbelief bringing the ball up the court. This has to go to Allen Iverson, right? LeBron trying to ISO on Paul George, their best player. Gets the shot off and it's blocked. Daniels blocking it from behind. Victor Oladipo now guarded by Dr. J. Talk about a mismatch, but. It's 2K. Victor Oladipo kicks it to Jermaine O'Neal, who goes through and gets a foul himself. Bailed out by the referees. Dolph Shays is in disbelief himself. Look how big his nose is. Jermaine O'Neal going to the free throw line to possibly get the first lead for the Pacers since the beginning of this game. And here he is, Jermaine O'Neal, for big clutch buckets. First free throws up, and he missed. Ooh, the second one is always the most nervous. Here's Jermaine O'Neal, hands shaking. Backs are getting tight, and he shots. And he misses two in a row. Chicken wings for everybody. The Pacers fail to take the lead. And now the 76ers are coming back the other way. Allen Iverson is going to put a stop to this mess. LeBron James driving on Jermaine. And he just dunks it. He yams it over Jermaine O'Neal. LeBron James with the highlight reel in the clutch. Oof. King James. 99 overall on the 76ers. Pacers still have a chance to tie or take the lead here with a three-point shot. And he kicks it to Jermaine O'Neal who just cuts and he kills. What happened? Just a total breakdown defensively. Nobody picked up the roller. Allen Iverson just too little to deal with Jermaine O'Neal back to a tie game. I cannot believe Jermaine O'Neal missed two free throws in a row though. To go ahead and try to take a lead. Here's LeBron James dribbling, isoing. Couple guys moving around, but now it's the Wilt Chamberlain. LeBron James screen and roll and that's just menacing. And he gets blocked again, but he gets his own shot. And he misses. LeBron is struggling in the clutch. Nedelicki is bringing the ball up the court. I really don't know who that guy is, but Victor Oladipo now with the Jermaine O'Neal screen. Can he go around? Has Dr. J on him. Jermaine O'Neal posted up against Allen Iverson. They send the double team. Jermaine pump faking, shooting over Allen Iverson, and he misses again. That is three times in a row. Jermaine O'Neal has had the chance to go ahead and take a lead against this Philadelphia 76er squad, and he has come up short. LeBron James for three. Miss. Pacers' hopes and dreams are still alive, but do not go to Jermaine O'Neal, please. 
go to Victor Oladipo, go to Paul George. They're going to Jermaine O'Neal, and he misses again. 22 seconds left, 109, 109, all tied up. Dolph Shays has the ball, he kicks it to LeBron James. LeBron says, slow this down. And they almost turn it over. Who's going to get this ball? Who's faster? The Pacers are diving on the floor, and he knocks it out of bounds. Nine seconds left on the shot clock. And the 76ers call a timeout. Man, if only we had audio <laughs> going on right now. This whole event would be wild. Wilt Chamberlain with the inbound. LeBron James calling for it. He's got Paul George d him up. Still a tie game. Winner takes all. LeBron, ISO, three, two, kicks it. Allen Iverson for three. Missed. And the Pacers have the ball. Four seconds left for them to take a game-winning shot and upset the overwhelming favorites with Wilt Chamberlain, with LeBron James, with Moses Malone, with Allen Iverson, with Dr. J. The 76ers are on the brink. They need to stop and they need to force overtime here. And Nedelicki is inbounding the ball. He can't find anybody yet. Now he gets it to Oladipo who throws an alley-oop stupidly, but there's a shot. Nedelicki for the win! And he missed! We're going to overtime! Woo! What a game here. What a game. What a game. And here we are on the inbound. And uh, the Pacers win the tip. Can I Can I save this? I can't save and quit. Damn. Yeah. There's no way for me to exit out of this without completely losing all our progress. So it's just going to be Pacers versus 76ers. No audio as Victor Oladipo gets swatted at the rim. Dr. J bringing the ball up the other way. Once again, the overwhelming favorites just get two points as Dolph Shays just lays it up too easy. Look at him with the wingspan. No defense is being played by the Pacers. They're gassed. They're tired. Pacers coming the other way. Now at a two-point deficit. Four and a half minutes to go. Gary Busey has the ball. And what is this play going to be? It's an action for Paul George, who's open. Pump fakes. Gets around. Midi. Misses. And that's going to be a two-point lead now for the Philadelphia 76ers. Hopping into Simcast back and forth game here in the fourth quarter. We'll hop in with about a minute and a half left. 76ers have a two-point lead yet. Uh... Again, Paul George gets the inbound pass, of course, being picked up all the way by LeBron James. Paul George versus LeBron. We've seen this matchup so many times in the annals of history. Paul George going around, has the mismatch Natoliki stuck, kicks it, kicks it. Don't know what this play is, but nothing came out of that screen and roll. That was a little bit weird action. Paul George just pulling up for three. Oh, and he missed. He wanted that shot bad, but he's he's not Steph Curry. He's Paulus George. LeBron for three. Splash. 99 overall. Five point lead for the 76ers. And this is why we have NBA imperialism to see guys like LeBron take over in clutch moments. Paul George gonna need to get clutch himself, but it doesn't look like it's gonna happen. There's one and a half minutes left. Might be too little, too late. Paul George trying to draw the foul. Gets the end one and he misses. Paul George also no stranger to <laughs> choking on clutch free throws. Only one of three from the free throw line today. First one is up and in. Second one is up. And in two for two, back to a three-point game. One minute, seven seconds left for your Philadelphia 76ers. Probably the favorites alongside the New York Knicks and maybe the Celtics right now to win it all. LeBron James, again, I swing up on Paul George. He says, I want this matchup. He shoots up a floater and misses. Pacers going the other way. Nedelicki dribbling the ball. I swing around. He's attacking Allen Iverson too little. And he gets the bucket. 122-123. Allen Iverson looking to be a defensive liability here. The Steel King needs to make up for it on the offensive end. Bringing the ball up the other way. Only a one-point game. 40 seconds left on the clock. Gets the screen from Moses. He's attacking, and there's not a lot here. Pulls up for mid, and splash. That's how you do it. Back up to a three-point lead. Pacers about to get back into desperation mode at this point. 36 seconds left. Down by three. Paul George accepts the inbound. Yet again, Paul George isoing. Yet again, Paul George trying to make it clutch. Looks like Jermaine O'Neal is gone, and Paul George just jacks up a three stupidly, and that is going to be probably a game unless a monumental collapse happens here by the Pacers. Unfortunately, they just come up a little bit short. Jermaine O'Neal misses some clutch shots. Paul George makes some boneheaded decisions, and the game is going to free throws. LeBron James need this. And it's a four-point game. And LeBron James has the opportunity to make this a five-point game. Now a two-possession game. 24 seconds left. The Pacers need a score, a stop, and a score just to get close. 
Victor Oladipo calling for the inbound pass. And it looks like he gets it. Nobody to pass to. Now Paul George dribbling the ball. Wasting precious seconds here. A couple actions going, but nothing really getting open here. Now Paul George accepts the screen. Is he going to pull up? Is he going to pass? He's going to lay it up, and he gets blocked pathetically, and that is going to be game. After a competitive series, all in all, the Pacers come up just a little bit short, but they fought their hearts out. They had several opportunities to win. Unfortunately, Jermaine O'Neal is not that guy. LeBron, pretty quiet game, 22-7-9. Wilt, pretty quiet game, 19-7. and Julie Serving was okay. Moses Malone, 18-6. and Allen Iverson hit that dagger elbow jumper, 17-13. And the Pacers, man, did they play. If only Jermaine O'Neal was a little bit better. 10 points, 5 of 12 shooting. How did he do from the free throw line? 0 for 2 with the opportunity to win this game. And they come up. George McGinnis was okay. Paul George, still don't know who Bob Natoliki is, but he was really good. 20, 12, and 5. Mel Daniels, 21 and 9. And Victor Oladipo, of course. The Pacers just fall a little bit short. Man, I got to say that hurts because I was... I was really rooting for the upset there. I was like, oh my God, are the Pacers going to upset? Probably one of the few favorites that are on this list. They, they, they got so close. They had their chances. They had the opportunity to win and they just came up short. So Pacers gone. 76ers continuing to climb. They're kind of building a wall here in middle America. They're saying we're going to take over from Delaware to, to Idaho. I don't know, but the 76ers are looking menacing right now i think we're going to be sending over paul george just because he's capable of playing so many different positions small forward shooting guard going over to the 76ers and he'll probably take over at the two guard as well or doug collins interestingly enough and the one overall boost can't give it to lebron james he's already 99 overall we can give it to Allen iverson or moses malone we'll give it to ai didn't i give ai an overall boost he should be a 98 have to go back and check but Allen Iverson gonna get the one overall boost and let's go ahead and make that change so Paul George is now a shooting guard where's Dr. J's a shooting guard here too you know we'll do we'll do both of them shooting we'll do Dr. J small forward we'll do Paul George shooting guard anyway their team is gonna look even more menacing now Allen Iverson Paul George LeBron James Dolph Shays Moses Malone Julius Irving Will Chamberlain the Philadelphia 76ers are completely stacked now, I need to go reset some things because apparently audio just decides to stop. It's like, oh, hey, how are you, Stacy? The other day I went to. Okay, where were we? So the Pacers lost to the 76ers. I had to go fix the audio. It required uh, a few hours of research, a few restarts. I had to delete and download drivers and update them. All in all, I'm not saying that it's your fault, you person watching this in the future. I just want to say that you're probably the most likely one to be at fault in this scenario. I'm clearly in the innocence here. It wasn't my fault. So if you have to place blame, I would say put it squarely on your shoulders and write an apology in the comments. Thank you. I appreciate that. I feel much better now that you said you're sorry. Anyway, I went back so I confirmed that Allen Iverson started at a 96 overall. So he should be a 98 as we expected. We did bring over Paul George. Did we get the one overall boost? I think we did. Right, we got LeBron James, that bumped it over to a 97. Then we brought in Paul George, that bumped it over to a 98. Okay, so all we need to do now is go on to the Wheel of Justice, the Wheel of Doom. Make sure that that is cleared up as well. And there we go. Make sure that the Pacers are gone. The spinner gets thinner and we only have, what, like uh, 12 maybe teams left before we actually start getting into Imperialism. Starting to see who's going to be the last remaining teams. This is basically round one if you will, as every single team gets one play, like the Pistons. I don't know why this is so slow. This app, whatever website this is, spinthewheel.app, is incredibly slow right now. But the Pistons, we look at their team and we say, all right, Detroit, Detroit basketball. So they're stuck. They're going to have to play somebody. They're going to have to play the Knicks. If they go north or if they go east, they're going to have to play the 76ers, which, whoo, if they go south, is there a scenario where they could play the Bulls? Probably not. And then they're going to have to play the Milwaukee Bucks if they go basically any other direction as well. So let's look at the spinner of the wheel. What direction are the Pistons going to go? Of course, Detroit has a ton of good basketball in their history. So they want to go. That's the 76ers again. Hmm. You know, I don't want to play the 76ers again. I'm sorry. So we're going to have them actually take on the Brooklyn Nets. When I say the Brooklyn Nets, I mean the New York Knicks. We're going to have them go like this kind of down. You know what I mean? I just, I, I don't want to play the 76ers every single time. I, I know that they're playing, they're a good basketball team, but 
it feels like we've been doing them nonstop. And of course, the Knicks, we already saw Walt, Frazier, Richie Gurin, Vince Carter, Dana Bouchier, and Patrick Ewing, Willis Reed, Carmelo, Anthony for their team. As for the Detroit Pistons, who have a storied franchise of really tough, gritty basketball. Of course, Isaiah Thomas, the point guard. Joe Dumars, the shooting guard. Grant Hill, back when he was prime Detroit, Grant Hill. Dave DeBouchier made his way to this team as well. Are you kidding me, dude? God, I wish I knew he were. And Bill Lane near King Chauncey. Chauncey Billups coming as the other point guard. Dave Bing. Look at that hairline. Oh, boy. Ben Wallace. Big Ben Wallace. Man, he was like, what, six foot eight, six foot nine, and a monster on the glass defensive player of the year. Rip Hamilton, Jerry Stackhouse, Dennis Rodman, Bernard Howell. Nope, Bailey Howell, Bill Lambeer, and Andre Drummond made his way onto this team. Andre Drummond, but no. Wow. Who cuts out these players' pictures? This is terrible. You can see the red in his hair. Jeez. And Kelly Tripuka. Dave DeBoosh. Dave DeBoucher. Let's see who the frick you are. So 1960s, he played for Detroit. Averaged like 15 and 16 points a game and 11 rebounds. So I guess he was more of a center. Uh, did he shoot the three at all? They didn't even have the three-pointer back then. That's how old this man is. Then he went to New York. So he was on Detroit and New York. And that's it. I'm 16 and 11 and he's on an all-time list are you kidding me are you kidding me it's gonna be a fun matchup though you got isaiah thomas versus walt frazier that is electric richie gurn versus joe dumars grant hill versus vince carter data boucher versus data boucher one of the biggest bestest matchups in recent memory and bob lanier versus patrick ewing it's friday night who's gonna win the ball wow all right uh the piston center does i already forgot what his name is is it Bill Lanier? Bob Lanier? Damn, I'm so bad with these old players. It's been a while, all right? I'm not an old head. I'm not an oldie. I know Michael Jordan. I don't know who Tony Kukoc is. Are you kidding me? As Joe Dumars comes in and gets the easy layup. Well, Frazier bringing the ball up the other way. Knicks are going to be a menace, but if there's a team that's deep enough to contend, it certainly would be the Detroit Pistons, as here is Walt just gliding and missing. Lanier picks up the ball, kicks it to Isaiah Thomas, who's holding a grudge and the ball right now. And who's this play going to be for? So Warren's action kicks it to an open Joe Dumars who does not take the shot. Going to get the screen. And he goes around you wing and he lays it up 4-0. Pistons take a commanding 4-0 lead here in the first quarter. Going into the second quarter. And it is a pretty closely contested game. Wow, the Knicks just locked down defensively here. Allowed 17 points. Or no. They scored. Uh, whatever. Words. You already know the Knicks are got the They're going to blow them out, right? Right, going into the fourth quarter, it's a four-point game, 91-84. If the Pistons can go on a little bit of a run, this is going to be a close back-and-forth game. Knicks, no strangers to playing tough, close games. And we got about five points, seven points, ten points, eleven points. Wow, the Knicks just absolutely stomped on the heads of the Pistons to close this one out. Locked them down. They've been stuck at 100. Finally get to 102, but it is too little, too late. The Knicks just went on a run to close this out. Patrick Ewing leading the way, 21 and 11 Walt Frazier, 18 and 7. Data Bouchier, 14, 5 and 6. 2 of 2 from the three point line. What is this man's three point rating if he never shot a three? <laughs> like, how do you grade that? Uh, Willis Reed, 14 and 9. Amari, 14. Richie Gurin. Vince Carter only gave you 12 points, even though he's the second highest overall. Grant Hill had a solid game, 28 and 7. Joe Dumars, 18 and 7. Isaiah Thomas, the other Isaiah Thomas, 16. Rip Hamilton, 15. Just not a lot of help. From the Pistons, they played good defense, did not play enough offense, and fell short to the Knicks. Sorry, Detroit, you are going to be eliminated as the Knicks are continuing to grow here. They are just taking over a large section of Northeastern America. What is the button that I need to press as I'm killing time to press this button? Bam, bam, and bam. There you go. Knicks are just continuing. Pistons, gone. Get off this. And we'll give the Knicks just a little bit of a logo size bump as well as they've taken over Canada and a lot of the east coast if they get beaten though they're still they're still haveable if you will you no know, one lucky team let's say the celtics or the nets are just going to come by and say thank you for everything that you have given us thank you for all that you have claimed and that is how nba imperialism works looking at the pistons theoretically you could take anybody that's like 93 and up chauncey billionaire bob lanier god grant hill joe dumars i'll just take isaiah thomas because he is the highest rated player because you look at the knicks and they are just stupidly stacked as well they got walt frazier their 98 overall point guard uh, Vince Carter, a 97 overall small forward, Patrick Ewing, Willis Reed, Ronnie Gurin, Carmelo Anthony. They could use an upgrade theoretically at the power forward position, but that's really it. But we'll take a backup point guard of Isaiah Thomas's caliber. I'm totally fine with that. And what is the button that I'm looking for? No changes to their starting lineup. Isaiah Thomas is going to be the sixth man. 
of the year for the Knicks and we'll make sure that Walt Frazier goes up to the 99 overall club. And that means Pistons, one game, one loss, get the hell off my wheel. The spinner gets thinner. We'll give it another go. There's still a bunch of teams still waiting for their first opportunity like the Spurs, like the Suns, and it's going to be the Phoenix Suns who probably also have Kevin Durant on their list of eligible players. So you go over to the Suns and you're like, all right, all right, you got Utah to the north. That'll be a tough one. You got the Lakers to the west. That's, I mean, obviously. And then you got a free state to the uh, to the right. I don't know this state and I'm definitely not just going to buy time until I tell you it's New Mexico. And then of course they have Nevada. How do you pronounce Nevada? Do you say Nevada or Nevada? You got them to the uh, to the, the north uh, northwest as well. What direction are the Poho Enix Suns going to look to go? They want to go uh, that way. They want to go I guess they want to take the free state, New Mexico. They want to get some free points, some free territory. I, you know, I can't hate them for that. Smart decision by the Suns, who are still trying to kind of figure out who they are in their own right. Go ahead and give them New Mexico. You know what I mean? Kevin Durant brings them a chip with CP3. Then you say, all right, these are some of the best players in the history of Phoenix Sun basketball, but nobody wins them a chip. They go, wow, this was just another failed experiment. Anyway, Phoenix Suns going to be right there. Next up to the chopping block, who's going to look better? Who's going to improve and who is going to fall? The Washington Wizards, who are pretty surprising players in this imperialism journey. They they tend to play a lot better than you'd expect. Look at the map. Where should the Wizards go? They're kind of surrounded as well, so they have to pick up some good players. Usually they beat the 76ers and take Joel Embiid. They got uh, Delaware and other state, New Jersey out there. Uh, Y'all states are too small in this area. Anyway, well, they've got a lot of places that they could go. Theoretically, let's go bam and spin the wheel. See who's going to win. See what direction the wheel is going to go. It's going to go north west. Can you not? Can you not take on the 76ers? Is there any way we could just say no? That literally, the only possible direction they could go here is to take on the 76ers. All right, fine. Let's do it. Wizards at Sixers. And in case I forgot, here's me giving the Phoenix Suns a one overall boost to their highest rated player, Steve Nash. I'm debating, contemplating putting Kevin Durant on the list, but I think we'll I think we'll leave that out. I think they're plenty good enough. Like, who would I take out if I really wanted to? Larry Nance. Maybe, maybe I'll take out Larry Nance Sr. and put put uh, Kevin Durant there instead. Chris Paul isn't even on this list. He certainly deserves to be there as well. So, I'm, you know what? We're not going to do it. We're going to keep... The Phoenix Suns official best players list as such just because that's the way 2k has it I don't want to affect too many roles too often and you look at the 76ers lineup they are ridiculously stacked Allen Iverson 98 overall Paul George 92 LeBron James Dolph Shays Moses Malone Julius Serving, who's probably should be starting over Paul George but he's not Will Chamberlain Billy Cunningham Joel Embiid I mean they're they're more than unfair as you look at the Wizards roster 10-man rotation they have Gilbert Arenas okay Phil Chenier, interesting. Karan Butler, oh, that's where you start to go down a little bit. Elvin Hayes, 94 overall. And Wes Unseld Senior being coached by Wes Unseld Jr., interestingly enough. John Wall coming off the bench. Moses Malone on the team as well. As well. Wheel. Bradley Beal, <laughs> the eighth man. And Earl Monroe. Who knew that Bradley Beal would be this high up in the, in the greatest Wizards of all time? Where's Michael Jordan? He's not here. Where's Wizards Jordan? Earl Monroe, Jeff Ruland, Antoine Jameson. That's when you know it's pretty bad. Don Ole, Bernard King, Jack Marin, and Jeff Malone. Definitely a fun matchup, but there you have it. Gilbert Arena is going to be taking on Allen Iverson. Battle of the undersized scores. Phil Chenier versus Paul George. Karan Butler versus LeBron James. Good luck, man. Elvin Hayes versus Dolph Shays. And Moses Malone versus Wes Unseld Sr. And Allen Iverson wins the tip. Dribbling the ball around the court. Kicks it to Gilbert Arenas. Who kicks it to Moses Malone, who's pump faking, and he's not doing anything, and he's dribbling, and he's stepping back, and he is kissing it off the glass, but he misses. Karan Butler bringing the ball up the other way. Phil Chenier has the ball now. Being picked up by Paul George. LeBron James versus Gilbert Arenas. That just don't seem fair. His Gilbert Arena is going to try to take free throws. He's not. He's going to kick it. And Elvin Hayes throws it down. Wizards up to a 2 nothing lead. Wizards again on upsert alert as they have a lead in the first quarter. 76ers take the lead back in the second quarter. And they are just rolling through halftime. Really high scoring contest. Not a lot of defense being played. And it is now a 22 point game here in the third quarter. And that's probably going to be a blowout. 76ers stomping all over the Wizards. Unfortunately, the Wizards too little, too late. They are not even competitive. 139 to 90. 
five. Looking at the box score, AI was great, 24 and 13. Moses Malone, 24 and 8. Paul George, 18 and 6. LeBron, 18, 4 and 14. Dolph Shaves gave you a 13 and 10. Joel Embiid, 13. Will Chamberlain, only 10 and 4. As for, wow, the Wizards didn't even have a 20 point per game score. Gilbert Arenas gave you a 16, 4 and 6. And that is all. He got locked the heck up. Cron Butler, 13, John Wall, 13, Bradley Beal, 13. Just a really unimpressive performance from the from the Wizards. And they're both 94 overalls. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take Wes Unseld Sr. and actually drop him down to the power forward position and have him be the starting power forward now on the all-time Philadelphia 76ers squad. He'll be taking over Dolph Shays' spot. We'll see who's actually the higher overall player once we get there. They're actually the same overall, so it looks like Dolph Shays is going to start and Wes Unseld is going to come off the bench, but yet another player for the 76ers squad to pick up because they are electric because they are beating everybody and unfortunately the wizards just another team to try and attack the 76ers and they fall there we go the philadelphia 76ers have officially touched the ocean now they're gonna try to go coast to coast east to west philadelphia rocking rolling unstoppable washington wizards thank you for coming thank you for playing but you are gone off the wheel as the spinner gets Thinner. and there's only a few teams left here in round one the charlotte hornets finally making their appearance and you look at them and you say all right where is charlotte going to go realistically look at the they can go north they can go south and get overall bumps you can't go to the east and you have the atlanta hawks pigeonholing you on the west coast so wheel of truth wheel of justice wheel of determination they're going to go south and that pretty much to me looks like they're going to be taking over south carolina right Right, yeah, that's South Carolina. Yeah, that pretty much works for me. Get a free overall boost. Don't have to take on the Atlanta Hawks because the Charlotte Hornets, also known as the Charlotte Bobcats, do not have a ton of great players in their history. So they're going to have to <laughs> scratch and claw to make anything good happen. Just take a quick peek at the Charlotte Hornets roster. Len Rice is their highest overall player. Really, Alonzo Mourning isn't? Eddie Jones. I mean, Kemba Walker. It's going to be a tough, tough run for them. Larry Johnson. Derek Coleman, Muggsy Bogues, Vladdy Divock, Baron Davis, Gerald Wallace. I mean, yeah, they don't even have Lamella Ball up here, and he probably is going to be the best player in Hornets history. All right, next up to the chopping block, now that the Hornets have gotten their turn out of the way, is going to be the Houston Rockets. What direction would the Rockets want to go? And they're pretty much stuck. They're going to have to play somebody. Thankfully, the Rockets have had a lot of good players in their history, but if they go anywhere southeast, it's the Spurs. They go anywhere north. Northeast, North in general, it's the Thunder, and then they have the Pelicans sitting and taking over Louisiana to the east. So the Rockets are basically stuck taking on the competition. Let's see what direction the wheel sends them, and it goes south. Yep, that's uh, San Antonio. That's going to be a fun one. Houston at the Spurs, two storied franchises in Texas. Got a fun one out here in Texas. Tony Parker made it up to a 94 overall on the all-time squad. That's pretty impressive. James Silas, an 88. What overall rating do they have Manu? He's a 90. I think, I think he should start. No offense to James Silas, you know, appreciate that you exist and stuff and things, but Manu Ginobili just does not get enough credit that he deserves out here in 2K. And in general, Kawhi Leonard, 94 overall, Timmy Duncan, and of course the Admiral, a 96 overall himself. Don't forget about George Gervin. Look how blurry that picture is. Louis Dampier, James Silas, Larry Kennan, Sean Elliott, made the list that's pretty interesting lamarcus aldridge as well Ooh, don't know about that bruce bowen defensive lockdown stopper artis gilmore johnny moore avery johnson even on this team don't know about that but man they just have a really stacked squad and most of them were together at the same time timmy duncan and duncan uh, 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 david robinson that's the word i'm looking for why leonard manu Tony. yeah they all played together at some point sort of as for the Rockets, you got Calvin Murphy rocking the point guard position. Mr. 1970s, okay. James Harden, Rudy Tomjanovich, Elvin Hayes, and Moses Malone coming off the benches. Hakeem, the Dream, Olajuwon over Moses Malone. Can we play them together? Mm, Clyde the Glide Drexler, Tracy McGrady, Yao Ming, Cliff Paul's a 90 overall, Ralph Sampson, Steve Francis. Oh man, I loved Steve Francis' game. Kenny the Jet, Smith, Otis Thorpe. Vernon Maxwell, just a, a fun squad there. So Hakeem has a 71 overall three-point shot, but I just feel like it wouldn't be right to have him starting as the power forward, even though he's a little bit of an upgrade over Elvin Hayes. So we're just going to let him do 
what he does. Calvin Murphy versus Tony Parker. Manu Ginobili versus James Harden. Rudy Tomjanovic versus Kawhi Leonard. Elvin Hayes versus Timmy Duncan. And David Robinson versus Moses Malone. And the tip off with the Admiral goes to uh, the other guy. Was it Elvin Hayes that's starting? I don't remember. I don't know all these old names. Boy, this really shows how bad of a NBA uh, aficionado I am in the older 80s and 70s days. Anyway, Calvin Murphy just goes completely around Tony Parker. Makes him look silly. Makes that man look embarrassing. But Tony Parker bringing the ball up the other way. Man, Manu looks so bald here. It's crazy. And this play is, I guess, post up for Timmy. No, Kawhi Leonard just going to take it. Pump fake. Timmy gets his man up in the air. Floater, floater, two to two. I don't know if that's a floater or a jump hook, but Timmy, Duncan, making it look easy. First quarter's going to the Rockets. Low scoring game here. The Wow, the Spurs. I thought they'd be a little bit more competitive, but they're actually losing by 17, 16 here in the fourth quarter. I don't know if I would have predicted this, but the Spurs struggling to find offense here. 90 to 102, six minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Close game here now, down to a three-point game, and the Spurs actually take a little bit of a lead. We'll hop in two and a half minutes left just because we don't see too many of these close games. Tim Duncan getting highlights. Substitutions are being made. This screen is completely freaking out. But here we go. Yao Ming inbounding the ball. And wow, look at that post position for Moses Malone. Gives the shimmy, gives the shake, and he just lays it right up. Houston takes a commanding four-point lead. San Antonio's going to have to generate some offense somewhere. They've got Kawhi Leonard, but other than that, most of their guys aren't great shooters. Manu Ginobili was a pretty solid three-point shooter. He's trying to be locked up by no defense, James Harden, but 2K doesn't know that. Ginobili bringing the ball up the court, and he just throws it right to Hakeem Olajuwon, who was waiting on that all day. James Harden bringing the ball up the other way. He's got he's guarded by his counterpart, Manu. Manu playing good defense, and he gets blown by. But James Harden misses the layup. Timmy Duncan flies in for the rebound. Manu bringing the ball up the other way. Looks like George Gervin is subbed in for Kawhi Leonard. Probably not a great option in my book. And Tony Parker gets a tough screen, but he kicks it to Dun David Robinson, who's doing a post fade. What? Why would that be your play? I don't know about a <laughs> no point scored in 45 minutes. I, I'm never going to get sick of that bug. I don't know if a post fadeaway jump shot for David Robinson is what I'd want, but he blocks Calvin Murphy here. Look at the size differential. And then Calvin gets a bailout foul call. David Robinson playing lockdown defense. The refs say, nah, free throws for the Houston Rockets. And they're going to decide who is the winner of this game. They're going to declare that the Rockets should win. They're like the Eagles and the Chiefs referees. Players deciding, nah, it's all about the refs. It's all about the money. Everything is rigged, even NBA imperialism. <laughs> Tony Parker running around. George Gervin had a shot. Kicks it to Tony again. Offense is just in shambles right now for San Antonio. Going back to David Robinson out of the post. Not sure if this is what I want. Hakeem locked him completely up. Now they get a screen. Tony taking a long two and misses. Ooh, David Robinson with the putback. Only a four point deficit. One in a minute, 17 seconds left on the clock. I'm not sure why they don't have Greg Popovich as the head coach of the all time Spurs team. That seems kind of weird. I mean, no offense. He's in the game already. Just make him the all-time head coach. Kevin Murphy being locked up. Here's Hakeem Olajuwon versus David Robinson. What a matchup this is. Hakeem spinning, traveling, and he misses, gets his own rebound, and puts it back up. It kind of feels like that's the only way offense works in, uh, when you're watching CPU versus CPU is just putbacks. Tony Parker bringing the ball up the other way. Got to find offense. Got to get stops. That's the only, only way that anything's going to happen for this team. Tony Parker dribbling dribbling kicks it and rolling is timmy duncan mr fundamentals timothy duncan gets behind his man and puts the bam jam damn that was it a sentence <laughs> 113 109 spurs need to stop bad he get to hakeem the dream who's getting doubled calvin murphy does not give great space he's getting double james harden is open for three and he misses but hakeem gets the offensive board and slows it down and that's gonna be a dagger hakeem the dream, Alajuan, gonna win this one for the Rockets unless something magical happens here for the Spurs and it looks like they're gonna try to post up. Now they're calling a time. What the? <laughs> and they kick it in to David Robinson who just goes immediately and draws the foul on Hakeem Alajuan. The dream is still alive, although faintly, David Robinson makes the first free throw. Gotta make this one as well and get a stop on the other end. They're probably gonna have to foul 28 seconds left and he misses. He misses, and then they had a takeaway, but he fouled anyway. Oh, the Spurs falling apart here in the closing seconds of the game. And is this Rudy Tomjanovic who's going to make his free throws? Yes. 
He goes two for two from the free throw line and it looks like it's going to be not enough time for a Spurs comeback down seven, 24 seconds left. Gotta run something good. Tony Parker pump faking, jacking up a three and misses. Hakeem grabs the rebound and that is going to be game. No need to stick around. We've seen that the Rockets are better than the San Antonio Spurs. David Robinson played valiantly. The Admiral gave everything he had, but 25 and 12 just was not enough. George Gervin was solid, 24. Kawhi Leonard gave him 19, 4, and 8. Timmy Duncan only 17, 7, and 5. 8 of 17 from the field. Not a great night from him. Tony Parker was a solid 10 and 6. Manu only gave him 4 points as well. Just a couple of unremarkable performances let the Spurs down. James Harden had a solid game. 21 and 8. Calvin Murphy a little better than advertised. 20 and 8. Moses Malone 18 and 11. Rudy Tomjanovic 17. Hakeem Olajuwon with those clutch baskets in the 4th. Those putbacks. 14 and 11 and Clyde, the Clyde, Drexler gave him 10. But look at this Rocket squad. They got James Harden, Tracy McGrady, Clyde, Glex, Clyde Drexler, Moses Malone, Hakeem Olajuwon. I think we'll be taking Timmy Duncan away from the Spurs. It kind of seems like the right move here. Position of need, he's the best player on the other team. So Hakeem Olajuwon, 98 overall, Tim Duncan, 98 overall. But we're going to give Hakeem a dream. The 99 overall boost officially joined it. The 99 overall squad is Hakeem Olajuwon. And we got to make sure that we fix the map as well. That means the Spurs, this kind of gray that they got going, gone. And the Rockets looking to take over a little bit of uh, a little bit of Southern Texas. If there was a team in Mexico, they would certainly be there as well. This looks really bad. Can I can I make this look nicer? I'm like that. Give you a little. Yeah, that looks better. Just so you can actually see the Rockets damn logo underneath everything. Spurs officially off the wheel as the spinner gets thinner looks like there's three seven teams left on this wheel for the round one los angeles clippers are gonna have to take on the la lakers you look at the map there's literally <laughs> there's nowhere for them to go at all they 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 have to take on the lakers now i don't want to say blow out but you look at it cliff paul i mean serviceable 93 overall jj reddick should not be starting then you have Kawhi leonard that's good blake griffin that'll work and bob mcadoo for the buffalo clippers wow Okay, World Be Free coming off the bench with Elton Brand, eh, Ron Harper, Danny Manning, eh, DeAndre Jordan, ugh, Chris Kamen made the list. Oof, look at that hair. Corey Maggetti should not be on anybody's all-time teams list. Norm Nixon, Swen Slater, Lamar Odom as well. I'm surprised Paul George isn't here, but Kawhi Leonard is. Not sure how I feel about that change, but these are the official all-time rosters. As for the Lakers, of course, Jerry, the logo, West, 97 overall. Kobe, Bean, Bryant, Elgin, Baylor, LeBron, James, Shaquille O'Neal, 98 overall, Magic, Johnson. I mean, they are just beyond stacked. When you have this many players that Magic has to come with the bench, you are set. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, James Worthy, even George Mikan made his way onto this list. Anthony Davis as well. Wilt Chamberlain is like the 11th man on this team. Gail Goodrich, Jamal Wilkes, Michael Cooper, Byron Scott. I think it's pretty obvious who's going to win this, but you never know. Battle of LA, Clippers at Lakers, NBA imperialism. Who you got? Place your bets. I'm going 50 point blowout by the Los Angeles Lakers as they win the tip. Jerry West bringing the ball up the court. Would be weird to see Jerry West playing today's game. Kobe Bryant, may he rest in peace, takes a long fadeaway and he misses. Good sign for Clippers fans as Blake Griffin brings the ball up the other way. Bob McAdoo kicks it to JJ Redick. JJ somehow on an all NBA team, somehow jacking up threes. And missing, unsurprisingly, Bob McAdoo gets the offensive board, kicks it to Blake Griffin, who throws it down with authority. Look at Blake Griffin, and where's my highlight on that? Woo! Hopping into Simcast, and the Lakers jump out to lead in the first quarter. Back and forth game here in the second quarter. And the Lakers looking like they're going to start to extend out a lead here in the third. Clippers, though, making a game out of it. Kind of a low-scoring contest here, an ugly, gritty game. That's the only way that the Clippers are going to be able to make this an upset here in the fourth quarter. About a 10-point game. Clippers got to go on a run. Otherwise, it's going to be too little, too late. And it looks like that is all she wrote. It's about a seven-point game, 15-point game. And the Lakers are just going to continue to walk away. The Clippers made a fight out of it, but ultimately, they fall a little bit short. 111-127. Lakers were great. Jerry West, 23-8. George Mikan off the bench, 21-2. Elgin Baylor, 18-11. Magic Johnson, 17-7-9. Kobe Bryant, 15-3-9. LeBron James, 14-8. Shaquille O'Neal, 9. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 6-9. Nice. James Worthy, 4. Anthony Davis didn't even play. As for the Clippers, Blake Griffin had a good game, 26-7-7. Ron Harper, 
20 points. Cliff Paul, 14 and 11. Bob McAdoo, 12 and 8. Kawhi Leonard, 10, 2 and 8. And Elton Brand gave him 10. I don't even know if the best player on the Clippers would even make the rotation <laughs> with the Lakers. But we'll send over Kawhi Leonard. Weirdly, Paul George wasn't on the list. Looks like he might be the 10th man off the bench. Look at their team. Jerry West, Kobe Bryant, James Worthy, Elgin Baylor, Shaquille O'Neal, Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, LeBron James. Kawhi Leonard makes it here at 9th. On a 10-man rotation, George, Mike, and Anthony Davis. Yeah, <laughs> the Lakers, it's not fair, man. And no surprises here. The Lakers are going to take over. Wow, that looks really ugly. Can I just paint over that, please? Thank you. And the Clippers officially gone. Get the hell off this list as the Lakers are the kings of LA and probably looking at that roster without even making a notable win are the kings of America. Take the teams off the wheel. Clippers are gone as the spinner gets Thinner. there's five teams left in this first round as the milwaukee bucks are gonna finally make an appearance speaking of kareem abdul jabbar and what team do the bucks want to take on what direction are the bucks gonna go you look at them you go south they're taking on the bulls you go southwest they're taking on i want to say iowa is that the state iowa it is the state man i'm so good at geography it's not even funny and they go any other direction, they'll be taking on the New York Knicks. It's where the Bucks going to go. They are taking on the Knicks. Yep. That's about as nicky and as it gets. There's no other way around it. Milwaukee Bucks at the New York Knicks. And we already know the Knicks are ridiculous. Walt Frazier is a 99 overall. Vince Carter, Dave Boucher, Isaiah Thomas coming off the bench is a 96. Willis Reed. As for the Milwaukee Bucks, they've actually got a pretty good roster of their own. Oscar Robertson, Sidney Moncrief, Ray Allen made his way into the starting lineup. Giannis, of course, a young Giannis. Look at that picture. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That is a pretty menacing starting five. The bench, not as good. Marquez Johnson, Chris Middleton, 89 overall. Bob Dandridge, Michael Red. Man, he was a stud back in his day. Glenn Robinson, Terry Cummings, Junior Bridgman, Ben Baker, Brian Winters, Paul Pressey. The rest of the team isn't as good, but that starting five is a force to be reckoned with. So if they can compete, I mean, you look at it, Oscar versus Walt, that's a pretty close matchup. Sidney Moncrief versus Richie Gurin is going to be a good one. Ray Allen versus Vince Carter. I mean, that's fun. Vince is obviously the better athlete and the better player, but Ray Allen is a great player in his own right. Giannis versus Dada Bouchier and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar versus Patrick Ewing. Tell me that's not a matchup you want to see. Here is the tip. Once again, in New York, seems like every team wants to run through New York to win NBA imperialism as Kareem. Abdul Jabbar wins the tip. And let's be honest, if the Milwaukee Bucks pull off this upset, get a little bit of depth on their team, they're going to be menacing. Ray Allen open for three splash. No, he missed, but Kareem on the glass puts up the baby hook. Milwaukee Bucks have a quick 2 0 lead. Walt Frazier bringing the ball up the other way. Got Patrick Ewing possibly setting the screen here. Don't know what the play is for. Don't know who the play is for. Looks like it's for Richie Gurin open for three splash. And it is going to be a high scoring game out here in new york bucks set the knicks going into simcast the first quarter the knicks jump out to a huge lead here in the second quarter it looks like the starters are not able to compete as well as i thought that they might third quarter about a four point game that'll actually work a little closer than i expected here into the fourth quarter 81 to 76 knicks have been leading the whole way but the bucks are starting to take a little bit of lead of their own they're fighting back back and forth game here six minutes left 94 92 96 94 98 94 the bucks upset alert wow they're just dominating this fourth quarter. We're going to hop in. 107.98. Two minutes, 26 seconds left. Chris Middleton inbounding the ball. I'm just saying, if they steal like uh, Walt Frazier, Patrick Ewing, ooh, this Buck squad going to be filthy. Now they're pulling up and they're making it. They're pulling up Marquez Johnson right in someone's face. Who was that? Carter? I don't even remember. Is that Marquez Carter? No. And I don't know what's wrong with the filters on this game either. It looks like the game is all smoky, but uh, that's fine. 109 to 88. And Richie Gurren kicks it. Vince Carter for three. Splash. That's Vince Carter. Okay. I was thinking of like old Knicks players and I'm like, I don't know a Vince Carter. I don't know what's wrong with the... First the audio cut out. Now everything looks blue. Like we're watching with a blue light filter on. I don't know what's happening. 109, 101. Two minutes left. Bucks call a timeout. Giannis inbounding the ball. Oscar Robertson calling for it. Going into the backcourt. They have an eight-point lead. Need to milk the clock away. Probably need one bucket. Oscar pulls up for three. Oscar splashing, baby. And it is up to an 11-point lead. The Bucks are rolling over the Knicks, who were the favorites to come out of the Eastern Conference. Can you believe it? The Milwaukee Bucks are going to dominate. Patrick Ewing says, not on my watch, but he misses. 
Kareem grabs the rebound, almost steps out of bounds. Giannis brings the ball up the other way. Electric. Remember, Giannis completely sandbagged every team he was on in the Imperialism Redux video. Kareem on the roll. Kicks it. Almost throws it away. And he gets his shit rejected by Richie Gurin. Isaiah Thomas trying to mount some sort of a comeback. Walt Frazier is out for some reason. Vince Carter calling for it. Out of the post. Posting. Is that Oscar? And he goes up. And he gets his shit rejected as well. The Knicks need to stop. And the Knicks need to stop bad. It is an 11 point deficit with only one minute left. Richie Gurin trying to D up Oscar Robinson. That is a tough matchup for him. Unfortunately, undersized. Under talented. Clock is draining away. And Sidney Moncrief is going. He's flying. He's getting the foul. And I think the next New York Knicks possession that they miss is going to be game because this lead is only growing. The Bucks came into New York and said, we want all your damn land. Isaiah Thomas is going to do whatever he can to keep this thing going like a nice little layup. 46 seconds left. And it looks like the filter got turned off. I don't know what happened. An Isaiah Thomas layup was the answer to why is my game broken? Now everything looks normal. <laughs> Y'all saw that transition, right? It just happened. I didn't press nothing. All right, Oscar Robinson. Man, 2K is such a... 2K is so dumb. Takes it to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And he's going and he's laying it up with the finger roll. And that is going to be game. Can you believe it? The New York Knicks get downed by the Milwaukee Bucks. Said it was possible. Nobody had a great game. Richie Gurren tied with the highest scoring. 18 for him. Vince Carter, 18 and 7. Willis Reed... 18 off the bench, Dave Boucher 14, 8, and 6. Isaiah Thomas only played 22 minutes, had 12 and 5. Did he get in foul trouble? Coach just didn't play him. Walt Frazier, 8 points and 10 assists. I mean, that's eh. Patrick Ewing, 8, 9. Carmelo only gave you 7 points. As for the Bucks, Michael Red popped off 20 points and 18 minutes for him. Kareem Abdul Jabbar, 19 and 12. Ayana, 17, 10, and 6. Oscar Robertson, 15, 2, and 6. Ray Allen, 14. Bob Dandridge, 12. And Marquez Johnson, 11. Who would have thought that the Milwaukee Bucks would come in and stomp over the overwhelming favorite New York Knicks? Jeez. I mean, the Knicks have just slowly been taking over this, this part of America. And they said, you know what? We want all it is. We want Canada. We want, we want this. We want that. And this is what NBA imperialism is all about. Look at the land that Milwaukee has just taken over as the Knicks, as big of a superpower as they were, gone milwaukee growing up huge and the milwaukee bucks might be the new favorites now next to the los angeles lakers so we're gonna have to do a little bit of roster management for the bucks because they already have oscar robertson but they need wing depth like crazy so i'm gonna send over the best player in uh in what's his face walt frazier and then i can't decide who's going to be the better point guard i'm gonna have oscar robertson play the shooting guard i know i know it's not realistic but He's a little bit taller. I think he's a slightly better player offensively. So Walt Frazier is going to play the point guard. That means Oscar Robertson is going to play the shooting guard. That means they still need a three. Sidney Moncrief is too undersized. Marquez Johnson, I guess, will play the three. And then Giannis, for some reason, is listed as a small forward. I know he's more than capable of that, but he needs to be a power forward just to make these rosters work out. So it'll be Walt Frazier, Oscar Robertson, Marquez Johnson, Giannis and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Spacing ain't great, but this Bucks starting lineup is starting to get a little bit of depth. And next onto the wheel is only four teams left of round one. Bulls, Heat, Kings, and Pelicans have not had a go yet. Looks like the Pelicans are going to be next on the list. And you remember, they are in a bit of a weird spot. You look at them on the map. They have they have a, a states, you know, to the north and east of them, but then they have two teams to the west of them as well that they will have to contend with. So you look at the wheel, you spin the wheel, and you say, what? direction are the pelicans gonna go and that looks like they want to take on a team not what i wanted them to do but it looks like it's gonna be pelicans at thunder of course the thunder picking up dirk Nowitzki, 99 overall they got russell westbrook prime russ at the one or gary payton doesn't really matter ray allen kevin durant dirk Nowitzki, jack sigma gary payton paul george dennis johnson we already saw them as for the pelicans who are formerly the new orleans hornets which is just frustrating because now there's the charlotte hornets i <laughs> They've got Cliff Paul at his prime, at his peak, 98 overall. Shooting guard is, should it be Baron Davis? Defense is going to be horrible, but I can't have an 85 overall on the bench when there's like a 90 overall Baron Davis just sitting, waiting to be played. Baron Davis in his prime was a monster. Jamal Mashburn, Zion Williamson somehow made the uh, made the list. I don't know about that. And Anthony Davis, 94 overall. Coming off the bench is David West. Y'all remember before he got old, he was a beast. 
Brandon Ingram, Drew Holiday, a young Drew, look at the hair, and Boogie Cousins, man, he came over for one year and was fun. David Wesley, wow, I haven't heard that name in a while. Julius Randle, I completely forgot he was even on the team for one season. Dyson Chandler, Lonzo Ball, damn, poor guy's knees. Peja Stoyakovich and Eric Gordon. Definitely going to be a fun matchup. You look at the team, you got Cliff Paul versus Russell Westbrook, Baron Davis versus Ray Allen, Jamal Mashburn versus Kevin Durant, Dirk Nowitzki versus Zion Williamson, and Anthony Davis versus Jack Sigma. I think this is going to be a one-sided affair, and I think that side is going to be, well, the team with the 99 overall and the team with uh, Kevin Durant and a prime Russell Westbrook and Ray Allen back on the Sonics. I just think the Thunder have way too much talent in their history. Of course, Sean Kemp going to be coming off the bench as well, but you never know. In 2K, as we're hopping in to the game, Anthony Davis setting the screen. Baron Davis pulling up for three. And that's not the strength of his game. He needs to be slashing and he needs to be. He makes highlight dunks. He doesn't make pull up threes. Russ just goes right around Cliff Paul. And that was horrible, porous defense from CP0. Going into Simcast, and the Thunder have a little bit of lead here in the first quarter. Going into the second halftime, it's actually a closer game than I thought. Back and forth game here into the third quarter. And we got an upset alert here. The Pelicans. Might be upsetting the Oklahoma City Thunder. Dirk need to come up clutch for them. Back and forth game here. Fifth, five minutes left, four minutes left. Five point game, eight point game. Thunder need to go on a run and it looks like they're doing the exact opposite. Two minutes left and the Thunder cannot score. They're stuck. Eight point game, six point game. All right, we'll hop in. The Thunder need to go on a run. Otherwise, Kevin Durant and Dirk Nowitzki are going to go home disappointed as the Pelicans are on upset alert. Up six, 50 seconds left. Something crazy got to happen, like a steal right here. Gary Payton, locked down. Baron Davis bringing the ball up the court. Don't know who this play is going to be for. And it looks like that blue light filter is back on. And now Baron Davis just gets fouled by Dennis Johnson. Really for no reason at all. I don't know why there's a blue filter on half the games. Maybe we need another layup to turn it off. Cliff Paul dribbling the ball, kicks it to Anthony Davis, who kicks it to a wide open. David West, who draws the foul. Good uh, ball movement there. From your New Orleans Pelicans rocking the old jerseys. Who's who's who were they? They were Charlotte at this time? No, they were the, the New Orleans Hornets. Yeah, basketball teams are weird, but calm, cool, and collected. David West drills the free throws. Kevin Durant gonna need to score and score fast. You pull up a three, it's only a four point game. So he's pulling up from two and missing. Well, that'll do it. Dirk Nowitzki getting benched for I don't even know who's playing right now. And uh, yeah, this game is over. Yep, <laughs> the Pelicans just got the offensive board and go up nine. And that is all she wrote. Gary Payton speeding up the court. Too little, too late. Going to try and draw some contact. And he does, but there is no way that the Thunder come back from this one as they fall 122-113. Definitely not what I expected. Kevin Durant had a solid game, 22-7-6. Ray Allen, 19-2. Paul George gave you 19. Dirk only gave you 12-6. Russell Westbrook, 13 shots made three. I mean, he had 10, 8, and 11, but oh, that stat line was bad. Jack Sigma, wow. Did not think the Thunder slash Supersonics were going to fall, but Zion Williamson is a glitch in this game. 23, 3, and 8. David, David freaking West got you 17 and 6 on 14 shots. Baron Davis was pretty solid, 16 and 7. Brandon Ingram, 16 and 6. Cliff Paul, 15, 8, and 11. And Anthony Davis gave you a serviceable 15 and 9. Jamal Mashburn, 11 off the bench. Okay, well, the Thunder got pretty, pretty thoroughly embarrassed here. So they are off the map. Make sure we fill their area with, I guess, New Orleans gold as Nola. Nola going to start to take over their part, their little section here of Southern America. I know Dirk Nowitzki is the higher rated overall player, but we'll bring over Kevin Durant just because I think he's a little bit more impactful. We'll send him over to the Pelicans and he will be playing, I guess, small forward for them. Taking over, unfortunately, Eric Gordon's spot. So they are now looking like Cliff Paul, Drew Holiday, or Baron Davis. Anthony Davis, David West, Kevin Durant. This team should not be good, but <laughs> apparently they are. Uh, that, that was a serious upset. Three teams left here in round one. Bulls, Heat, and Kings. And it looks like the Sacramento Kings are going to be taking on... There's really two routes for them to go if you look at the map. They could sneak out of California... Go into Nevada and then eventually get whooped by one of these teams. Or they could take on the Warriors, which they might have a chance of winning. Or the Lakers, where they lose undoubtedly. So, Kings, where you want to go? What you want to do with your damn lives? They are going to go straight up, straight north, 
that's the Golden State Warriors. Kings at Warriors. <laughs> Good luck. Obviously, the Warriors team is stacked. Steph Curry, Clyde Trexler, Kevin Durant, Draymond Green, Will Chamberlain, Rick Barry, Chris Mullen, Nate Thurman, Paul Reason, Baron Davis, Clay Thompson, Tim Hardaway. I mean, they just obviously. But you look at the Kings. They've got a pretty rich history, interestingly enough, as well. So you go Oscar Robertson at the one. That's already just incredible for the Manchester Royals. Mitch Richmond at the two. He was a beast back in his day. Peja Stojakovic, knockdown sharpshooter. John Jerry Lucas. I don't even know who you are. How old are you? What season was Jerry Lucas drafted? Do I need to Google? Right. My man played in 1963 to 1974. <laughs> would it be 17 and 15 anyway jerry lucas 95 overall and boogie cousins was a monster when he was in his prime before all those injuries took him out nate tiny archibald 94 overall okay wayne embry where's chris weber am i drunk chris weber's not in the game uh this game is racist but chris weber was like a 90 i give him a 94 overall as well wayne embry vladi divok mike bibby Otis Birdsong, Kevin Martin made it over Chris Webber. Are you kidding me? I, I ain't even playing. Where's Chris Webber? Anyway, 2K sleeping, and we got the blue light filter again. All right, we're going to power through it, and then I'm going to have to reset the PS5 now. What is with all these technical difficulties, man? Oscar Robertson versus Steph Curry going to be a good matchup. Mitch Richmond versus Clyde Drexler. Peja versus Kevin Durant's a mismatch. Ke Jerry Lucas versus Draymond Green, and Boogie Cousin versus Wilt Chamberlain. As much as I like Boogie. That is going to be a problem as well. And the blue light filter is gone now. What is this game? Will Chamberlain does win the tip for the Golden State Warriors as Stephanie Curry brings the ball up. Being picked up by Oscar Robertson and Kevin Durant flying around. I don't know what this play is. I really don't know what this play is, but uh, it's Steph Curry. Makes something happen. Gets the screen from Will. Jacks up a fading tough three and he misses. Mitch Richmond does grab the board. Coming the other way. Picked up by, who is this guy? Is that Mitch Richmond? Could be. Oscar Robertson, open for three. Splash, looking like the real Steph Curry out there is number 14. Gonna do one more possession series, see if the Warriors can respond early here in the first quarter, down three to nothing. No, that's Clyde Drexler, that's right. His hair looks embarrassing. Kicks it to an open, Kevin Durant for three. Splash, we got a tie game here in Golden State. Simulating through the first quarter. It looks like the Kings have a lead now. It's a back and forth game here into the second quarter going to halftime. And the Warriors are starting to put a stamp on this. Now up five points going into the fourth quarter. And now the Kings have a little bit of lead. Just a really close back and forth contest here for the California teams. 98, 97, 99, 98. Going to be hopping into Simcast as soon as we get under. Probably about three minutes. But the Kings. Wow, look at this. Jumping out to a 10-point lead. Warriors going to fight back though. Nine-point deficit, 10-point, eight-point. Boy, the Warriors are getting stomped on. They just cannot get stopped. Seven-point game, eight-point game, nine-point game. Eight-point game, seven points left here. We'll hop in, just see what happens. I don't know why we're hopping in immediately to highlights. This game is broken, but the Warriors have the ball, and they need to score. Down seven, one minute, 50 seconds left. Jermon Green sets the screen for Paul Reason. Clyde running around, and this is Rick Barry for three. Missed. Boy, the Warriors need that. Now they're going to need to find a defensive stop within themselves. Oscar Robertson has the ball being picked up by somebody who's extremely bald. In fact, all the guys on this team are extremely bald. Rick Barry playing long drop defense there and a miss. Draymond Green bringing the ball up the other way. Is he going to pull a crazy? Is he going to try to shoot ahead of Kevin Durant? Kicks it to an open Barry who pump fakes and he's going driving for loader. Makes it. It's down to a five point game. Rick Barry with the kiss off the glass. The hair might look ridiculous, but the game is not. Oscar trying to find a way to respond for your Sacramento Kings. As the Warriors are on upset alert now, they need to stop. This play looks like it's going to nobody, and it looks like Oscar's going to have to make something, create something. I don't know why Steph Curry's out of the game. Waiting to sub back in, so is Wilt Chamberlain. Oscar just posting up. Oscar fading, making, and that's a dagger for your Sacramento Kings. And it looks like the Warriors are going to be falling Call a timeout, get Steph Curry in, and hope that he can make magic happen. Five-second inbound violation. And he finally gets it to Clyde Drexler, who kicks it to Wilt, who kicks it to Barry, who kicks it to Green, who shoots the... Draymond Green shoots, and he makes it! <laughs> no way, Draymond Green splashing from three down to a four-point lead. Now, the Warriors need to stop. They're doubling, and Boogie Cousins is open, and Boogie draws the foul. 
Rick Barry left him all open on that bad double team, but Boogie misses the first free throw. Only two of five from the line tonight. Boogie Cousins is struggling. All right, Boogie, make your second free throw. And he misses them both. The door is wide open for the Golden State Warriors with their comeback. Down four, 36 seconds left. Draymond Green bringing the ball up the court, kicks it to Stephanie Curry. Steph taking a ridiculous shot. What are you doing, Steph? No, that's game, Steph. He didn't even get a screen. He just took a fading fall away 32-foot three-point shot. And immediately, the Kings now go into the free throw line, and they're going to convert here. I don't know what they were thinking, but Nate Archibald makes them both from the free throw line. Warriors need a timeout. They had a chance. They had an opportunity. And the CPU said, oh, we're going to have Steph Curry take fall away out of bounds, 33-foot contested jumpers with 20 seconds left on the shot clock down four. You can't make this stuff up. NBA 2K AI is jank. Draymond Green kicks the ball to Rick Barry, who kicks it to Draymond, who kicks it to Clyde, who kicks it to Barry, who's driving, who kicks it to Draymond Green again, who pump fakes. They need to start putting up shots. Will Chamberlain driving into the paint, draws the foul, misses, and he's going to have to make some free throws. And I know that, oof, <laughs> Will's shot does not look pretty, but it goes in for the first one, and the second one is up and in. Two for two. Now it's time to play the foul game. Still a four-point deficit, 18 seconds left. There's still time. Peja Stojakovic is on the inbound, and he's going to kick it to Tiny Archibald, who's going to the free throw line immediately from a foul from Steph Curry. That is his fifth. Tiny made his last two free throws. Is he going to make them now? Up and... Oh, he missed! The door is still open. The Warriors getting every chance they can to make a comeback. 123, 127. He missed them both. And the ball is open. Rick Barry bringing the ball up the court. There's still hope for your Golden State Warriors. Steph Curry kicks it to Draymond Green, who jacks up a three of his own. What are the Warriors doing? <laughs> who would have thought Draymond Green would go Steph Curry and Steph Curry would go, I don't even know who, who, who takes a shot like that. That was the worst three-pointer of my life. And the Warriors fall 128, 125 in sad fashion. Clyde just didn't get a touch at the end. 20 and 7 for him. Wilt gave you a 20, 11 and 4. Rick Barry, 19. Kevin Durant wasn't in for the final possessions. I'm not sure why. 18 for him. Chris Mullen, 17. And Steph Curry had a rough game. 5 of 17 from the field. 16 points and 11 assists for him. Draymond Green had that ridiculous pull-up three-point shot. He made one and he said, I'm hot, coach. I can do it again. He's going to have to go on his podcast and apologize. 7, 5, and 8 for him. For the Kings, wow. Oscar. Great game from him, 27, 9, and 5. Jerry Lucas gave you a triple-double, 20, 10, and 10 with the mutton chops. Peja, 17. Mitch Richmond, 16. Tiny Archibald, 12, and 9. Boogie missed a couple of clutch free throws, but they prevail as the Sacramento Kings beat the Warriors. Definitely not what I was expecting, but <laughs> the royal purple is growing. The Warriors, gone. Get the hell off this team. And the Sacramento Kings going to try to start a rivalry yet again with the loss Angeles Lakers and they're tied highest overall with Steph Curry the Kings already have Oscar Robertson I could send him Kevin Durant but I feel like that's too much so we'll send Wilt Chamberlain over to the Rochester Royals to the Sacramento Kings who upset the Golden State Warriors in surprising fashion Wilt immediately going to be their highest overall player and their best center as well 98 overall and we'll give the one overall bump to Oscar Robertson Two ninety eight overalls now Oscar Mitch Peja a little bit of a weak point here 88 overall Jerry Lucas and Wilt Chamberlain now 98 overall. Definitely was not expecting a Kings victory here, but there's only two teams left now in round one, Bulls or the Heat. Looks like the Chicago Bulls are going to go next. So we look at the map, take a quick peek, and the Bulls, obviously they have Jordan. Obviously they shouldn't have been waiting this long, but they're going to be great. As you all know, prime Derrick Rose, Scottie Pippen. So they got the 76ers to the east. They got the Bucks to the north. Couple of teams, couple of states where they can get just basic overall bumps in the other directions. Let's see where the arrow of fortune sends them. And they're going. Every team just continues to immediately take on each other. I try to always fill out these empty states and they don't want to do it. All right. Is this, this is 76ers, right? Bulls at 76ers. All right. 76ers squad. Y'all already know. Allen Iverson, Paul George, LeBron James. Dolph Shays, Moses Malone, Wes Unsell, Julie Serving, Billy Cunningham, Will Chamberlain. They just got a ridiculous squad. But the Bulls are no slouches of their own. Prime Derrick Rose, 96 overall. 
99 overall, Michael, Jeffrey Jordan, Scotty Pippen's a 98, Dennis Rodman, Artis Gilmore, Jimmy Buckets, Bob Love, Jerry Sloan, Joakim Noah's an 88 overall back when he was good, BJ Armstrong, is he like 5'10", 6'2", all right, Zach Levine's an 87, Reggie Thias, Theus, Tony Kukoc, you love to see it, Horace Grant, Kirk Heinrich, I mean the Bulls have had some good teams of their own as well, but here you go, with the blue light filter on, Bulls at the 76ers. Derrick Rose versus Allen Iverson going to be a matchup of epic athletic proportions. Michael Jordan versus Paul George. Scottie Pippen versus LeBron James. I mean, you love that. Dennis Robin versus Dolph Shays. And Artis Gilmore versus Moses Malone. Definitely a big fan of this matchup here. And who's going to win the tip? Who's going to be the king? Who is the GOAT? Is LeBron better than Jordan? Tune in to find out. Skip Bayless will certainly tell you so. LeBron being guarded by Scottie Pippen, and I don't know what the defense is here, but Michael Jordan versus LeBron James. Man, I wish we could see that in a time machine, as what kind of shot is that from Moses? Dennis Rodman, no stranger to defensive rebounds, pulls down the board, and Derrick Rose has a mismatch already. Uh, Rodman should not be touching the ball. Artis Gilmore should not be touching the ball, but they're going directly to Michael Jordan. Got the smaller Allen Iverson on him, and he just puts it up over him. Michael Jordan, go Jordan. Puts it up and gets the first lead of the game here in the first quarter. The 76ers, though, do have a better team. Looks like they're winning here pretty handily in the second quarter. Going into the third with about a 20-point lead here. And the fourth quarter just continuing more of the same. Bulls, not enough firepower. As good as Michael Jordan is, as good as Scottie Pippen is, their bench is nothing compared to what the 76ers have accumulated. 146-113. Allen Iverson was great. 28-15. and 15. Paul George. Paul George? 24, 4, and 4. Julie serving 21, 5, and 5. LeBron 19, 7, and 7. Dolph Shays 19, 4. So it is confirmed that LeBron James is better than Michael Jordan. Scottie Pippen gave you 24, 5, and 8. Jordan had a horrible game. 40 minutes, 7 of 20 from the field, only 17 points. That's not what you want to see from the GOAT. Jerry Sloan, Derek Rose, Bob Love, just a really poor showing from your Chicago Bulls. And this march of Philadelphia is continuing. Chicago Bulls gone philadelphia gonna try to spread their tentacles all the way to the west coast they have taken over a lot of teams out here and they'll be picking up michael jordan as well obviously michael jordan gonna slide in at the two and look at this lineup alvin allen iverson michael jordan lebron james Dolph shays moses malone wes unseld julia serving will chamberlain the 76ers are now a force to be reckoned with and there's only one team left on this list it is the Miami Heat who need their final turn as well. And then we will reset the wheel with teams that are left. Obviously, the Miami Heat only have one direction to go. And that is, as always, kind of sad in these uh, Imperialism rebuilds to take on the Orlando Magic. They're pretty much stuck just like the Clippers were. Only one way for you to go, and that is through Shaquille O'Neal. Heat at the Magic, and you think that the Heat have a lopsided affair, but the Magic have had some damn good players of their own right. Penny Hardaway, a young Tracy McGrady, Grant Hill before the injury sapped him. Rashard Lewis was okay, Dwight Howard, of course, a beast, and Shaquille O'Neal, pre-Lakers MVP days. Nikola Vucevic is the seventh best player <laughs> on the Magic in history, though. Not sure how I feel about that. Hito Turkoglu, uh, Steve Francis, who's old at this point, Nick Anderson rocking the flat top, Scott Skiles, Horace Grant. I mean, he was good, but he's not, you know, one of the best players of all time as far as, you know, this stuff is concerned dennis scott was pretty good daryl armstrong jameer nelson somehow is on this list as well he really shouldn't be looking at the heat tim hardaway just a beast dwayne wade one of the best players in the history of the game jimmy buckets is on the team J lebron james obviously is a god alonzo morning glenn rice shaquille o'neal chris bosh ronnie cycli i don't know who that is when were you drafted sir 1988 i should probably know you but i don't bam made the team steve smith Interesting. Goran Dragic? <laughs> I don't know about that. Eddie Jones, Hassan Whiteside, Udonis Haslam, the Miami Heat legend. I saw, though, a post that was like, man, uh, Dwayne Wade is the only guy to have carried a team on his rookie contract to the NBA Finals. I'm like, yeah, he sure was the best player in the team, but carried? Y'all forgot how good Shaquille O'Neal was in his prime? Carried? Really? He carried the Heat? I feel like Shaq had something to do with that. Anyway, it's going to be Tim Hardaway versus Penny Hardaway. Battle of the Hardaways. Dwayne Wade versus T-Mac. Just a fun matchup there. Jimmy Buckets versus Grant Hill. Rashard Lewis versus LeBron James. Oof. And Dwight Howard versus Alonzo Morning. This was when LeBron was at the peak of his powers. Kind of coupled alongside those first few years in Cleveland as well. But I think the Miami Heat are going to roll. You never know. Magic win the tip. And 
Penny Hardaway brings the ball up the other court. I gotta make sure I get the Hardaways right. I never watched their game, so I only know them off uh, off, off, off reputation. Dwight Howard, though. Remember when he was trying to carry a team to the... Wow, what was that? Richard Lewis taking a contested shot over LeBron. You wish. He was trying to single-handedly win some championships out there. Young Dwight, defensive menace, offensive disaster. Kind of like Rudy Gobert. <laughs> D-Wade being picked up by a young Tracy McGrady. LeBron James stepping back. Pump faking. Three in the key. Nowhere to go. Jimmy Buckets out of the post. Just goes right around Richard Lewis. And he puts it up. Two points for your Miami Heat. Battle of Florida. Who's going to win in the first quarter? Is a really close, low-scoring contest. Back and forth going into halftime. The Magic have a bit of a lead here. The Magic have a bit of a lead here. Okay. Seven-point lead here in the third quarter. Now a four-point lead. Really close game. I didn't think it would be this close. I thought the Heat were going to kind of blow them out. But hey, maybe LeBron James isn't that good. Fourth quarter, seven-point game, eight-point game, nine-point game. Close game. Heat need to go on a run. And it seems like every time a team is down, that's it. That's over. They never have a chance to get back into this game. Seven points. Nine points. 11 points. The Magic are just running away with it. The Heat are stuck. They can't score and they're going to lose. The Heat lost to the Magic 123-103. Wow, was not expecting that, but T-Mac popped off. 31-9. Shaq gave you a 20-13 and game. Vooch gave you 16 points. Richard Lewis, Dwight Howard gave you 13-11. and Penny, 10-5-12. As for the Heat, LeBron was the only one who showed up as usual. 27, 9, and 6. Tim Hardaway gave you 18. Alonzo, 13, and 12. Glenn Rice, 13, and 8. Shaq, only 10, and 4. Jimmy only gave you 8. D. Wade only gave you 6, 7, and 8 on 2 of 12 shooting. Ah, the Heat just did not show up. And that means the Kings of Florida in all-time rebuilds are the Orlando Magic. Get this Miami Red out of here. Wow, that... Why does that look dumb? <laughs> what happened? Wait, what? I don't know what that was, but Miami officially gone, eliminated from the Imperialism Tournament as the end of round one has the Orlando Magic taking over Southeast America. Still a bunch of teams, still plenty of teams left, a lot of empty states as well. We got to fill out. Middle America hasn't really been touched. Maine and Vermont, Delaware, those states as well. Obviously, you're going to take a 99 overall LeBron James A plus is everything and put him on the Magic. That means he'll be taking the place of who? Grant Hill? That'll work. They do need a power forward. Hito Turkoglu cannot be the starter, but team already looks a lot better. Penny Hardaway, Tracy McGrady, LeBron James, Richard Lewis, uh, Dwight Howard, and Shaquille O'Neal. If only one of these two guys could shoot a lick, they would be subbed in as power forward. And that is it for the first round of NBA imperialism. Time to reset the wheel. Round two, fight. First spin of the second round. The entire wheel has been repopulated with the teams that are remaining on the map. Let's see who is going to be the first one to make a move. And this round's really more about filling out some of those empty states, getting overall boost, the occasional matchup here and there. But for the most part, not too much is going to happen. And we have the Milwaukee Bucks. And who are the Bucks going to be taking on? If they go south at all, it is the Philadelphia 76ers. I'd like to avoid that, probably take over some of these states. If they go east at all, I mean, it could be the Celtics, could be the Nets, could be New Hampshire. So we'll see what the arrow of fortune tells them to do. They are going. Yeah. Is that, you know, that's going to be uh, the state that I'm buying time to tell you what it is in Vermont. They're going to be taking over Vermont. The Milwaukee Bucks have decided that they want to take over Vermontia. So a little bit of this. Boom action and making sure the vermontian bucks get an overall boost so they have kareem who's already 99 walt frazier who's already a 99 so we have oscar robertson or Giannis antetokounmpo and i think i'm gonna do Giannis getting the overall bump because his three-pointer right now is a 69 nice let's get that to a 70 he's officially a 96 overall oscar we could do there's just so many oscar robertsons out there that are beasting and feasting at this point and you'll notice we aren't taking teams off of the wheel at this point we're just spinning to winning and the sacramento kings who have an oscar robertson of their own are going to be the next spinners looking at the map looking at sacramento what is sacramento that's right sacramento took out the warriors so they have basically anything but south is going to give them a direction and a free upgrade overall point, and that is just directly north. They're taking over Washington. They're saying, Seattle Supersonics, I want you. There we go. The Pacific West is officially Sacramento King Nation, and can't forget to give them their overall point. This is what I mean. The uh, 
the, the, the second round is a little more TCB taking care of business, but Oscar Robertson now joins the 99 overall club. Of course, Will Chamberlain here as well. He will be joining the 99 overall club next as we determine who is the next wheel spinning team. Next on the wheel is going to be the... Uh, Orlando Magic. Y'all saw they took over Florida. They took over Alabama, and now they might be ready to take on the Atlanta Hawks. So realistically, I'd like to see if they could take over Mississippi. If not, you know, that, that's not the worst case scenario. They're going to be taking on either the Hawks or Mississippi. <laughs> Simple as that. There's only a few directions for them to go. Spin the wheel. We'll spin it, spin it. And they're going. You can't go that way. You just, you can't. All right, pick another direction. That is your direction. There you go. They want to take Mississippi. I will be more than happy to give them Mississippi. Fill out the colors a little bit and make sure that somebody is going to get their nice overall boost. I like these funny shapes that these Imperial Nations are getting. It's kind of, it's almost realistic in a way. I still can't believe they have the Miami Heat version of LeBron James here. So 99 overall. Tracy McGrady, 96 overall. Penny's a 94. Shaq and Dwight, 93s. We'll go ahead and give it to... T-Mac bump him up to 97 overall. All right, no teams have played yet. Just to kind of overall bumps for some of these guys. And the Houston Rockets are going to be the next team on the map. So you look at the Rockets and you say, all right, they could take on the Suns or the Pelicans. That's really it. So we're going to have definitely our first matchup here. Suns or Pelicans, depending on where the arrow of fortune directs them. And they Houston Rockets. That's Pelicans, man. Straight and simple, sure enough, Rockets at Pelicans. And we've seen these teams already, the Rockets at the Pelicans. You got Calvin Murphy, who's played much better than expected against one of the best point guards in the NBA history. Cliff Paul, James Harden at Baron Davis. I would probably take James Harden, even though Baron Davis is a freak athlete, he's a bit undersized and more of a slasher. Well, James Harden has just been unreal, scored like 40 points a game in a season. Rudy Tomjanovich versus Kevin Durant mismatch. Timmy Duncan versus Zion Williamson. Theoretically, you go Tim Duncan, no doubt. But 2K loves them some Zion, so that's about a push. Moses Malone versus Anthony Davis, exact same thing. So, I don't even know who to really root for. I think the Pelicans should be the underdogs, but I wouldn't be surprised if they win because 2K cheeses and says, Oh, Tim Duncan? Nah, he's too boring. Give me more Zion highlights. Anyway, Rockets win the tip with Moses Malone, I believe, taking the jump. And Baron Davis is already shook. James Harden, step back three. Looks nice, doesn't go in. Cliff Ball grabs the rebound, kicks it up to Kevin Durant, who just pulls up, and he missed. Whew, I thought that was going to go in. Yeah, there is a Kevin Durant and an Anthony Davis and a Cliff Ball, so it's not lopsided. James Harden is chacking up threes and missing. Anthony Davis grabs the rebound, kicks it once again up. Kevin Durant almost pulls it, and he's got a mismatch. Calvin, what's-his-face, is on him, and that is just too short. Here's no way that he's going to be able to keep up with the seven-foot monster, Kevin Durant hopping into Simcast. The Pelicans have a good lead here in the first quarter. Going into the second quarter, it's uh now the Rockets have the lead. Third quarter, 79 to 63. Rockets are blowing out the Pelicans, and this is going to be an ugly game. That is all she wrote. Rockets dominated after the first quarter. Wow. Kevin Durant, 18 shots, 21 points. Not very efficient. Anthony Davis was good. 18 and 10. Jamal Mashburn was the third highest scorer. Ooh, not what you want to see, Cliff Paul. Only gave you eight points and seven rebounds, three assists, three steals. Not a good game from him. Two of 11 from the field. Zion, 10 and 11, but he went five of 11 from the field. Baron Davis gave you eight points, 0 of 5 shooting in 33 minutes. David West did not have a breakout game. That face is pretty much how I feel about you, David. And Drew Holiday was serviceable. As for the Rockets, James Harden was good, 22, 6, and 6. Timmy D, 18, 7, and 10, outplayed his counterpart. Hakeem Olajuwon, 18, and 5. Calvin Murphy, 16, and 10. This dude just plays so much better than his overall indicates. Moses Malone gave you 16, and 12, and T-Mac off the bench gave you 16, as well as the Rockets rolled. And fill all this area up with Rockets burnt red. Make sure that the New Orleans Pelicans are gone. Get the hell out of here, as the Houston Rockets are growing fast taking over Southern America. Not South America, Southern America. Rockets need a wing player. Pelicans have Kevin Durant. I could give him Cliff Paul to take over, but that point guard, Calvin Booth, whatever his damn name is, is just playing too good to replace at this point when they have, I think who's starting right now for the Rockets? Elvin Hayes, Rudy Tomjanovich is getting starting minutes. That's just not acceptable. So the Rockets are gonna pick up Kevin Durant, Hakeem Olajuwon already a 99 overall. 
Timmy Duncan, he's going to join the 99 overall squad, I guess. So their roster is going to look something like this. Calvin Murphy playing unreal, only five foot nine, but this man is a legend. James Harden, 95. Kevin Durant, 97. Timmy Duncan, 99. Moses Malone, 97. And Hakeem Olajuwon off the bench, 99. Clyde, T-Mac. The Rockets are a menacing team. And that means the New Orleans Pelicans get the hell off of my wheel as the spinner gets thinner. Getting down to it about the top 10, I would say, is the Los Angeles Laker. Laker legends are going to be next. They'll probably try to hunt after the Kings, all things being equal. Look at the map. Pull this up. They got the Kings to the north. They got Nevada to the northeast. And then they got the Phoenix Suns to the right of them as well. Where do they want to go? Spin the wheel of fortune. Determine who the Lakers are going to take on. And that feels like Nevada. Let's do it. <laughs> I know it should be the Suns. I get that in hindsight. Maybe I will regret this. But we need to fill out some of these empty states and give some overall boost. If there is a team that doesn't need to go and take on another team and get their best player, right now it's the Los Angeles Lakers. So there you go. Fill that out. Give them a one overall boost. And it looks like... Magic Johnson is going to join the 99 overall squad, be the first 99 in Laker history, at least according to <laughs> 2K all-time teams. Anyway, spin in the wheel again. The next team is going to be the Phoenix Suns, who almost got into it with those Los Angeles Lakers we saw before. So you look at the Suns and you say they are trapped. They're going to have to play somebody and they're going to have to play somebody fierce. Good luck, Phoenix. Pick who you want, Jazz, Rockets, or Lakers. And they are going to be taking on the Lakers. Yep, that sounds about right. We already looked at this Lakers squad. It's ridiculously stacked. It has 99 overalls coming off the bench. Y'all already know. But the Sun squad, we haven't taken a peek at yet. Steve Nash at the one with that overall boost is a 98 overall. They got Walter Davis as the 1977 draft shooting guard. Sean Marion, a 92 overall. Tom Chambers and Amari Stoudemire, a 93. I don't know about these ratings, man. Dennis Johnson, 95 overall. Jason Kidd coming off the bench. Charlie Scott, uh, Kevin Johnson, that's respectable, 91, and Paul Westfall behind him, Devin Booker as well. What is wrong with Devin's face here? What are you, He's squinting, trying to look at the screen, see why? Am I really a 90 overall? Dan Majerly, Dick Vander, Van Arsdale. I like Dick. I've always liked Dick. Larry Nance Sr., who's apparently on every single team ever, and Alvin Adams to round out the team. All in all, going to be a fun matchup. I think it's obviously going to be Lakers domination. I mean, Steve Nash versus Jerry West. Overall's department is a push, but I'll take Jerry. Walter Davis versus Kobe Bryant. Oof. Sean Marion versus James Worthy. Oof. Elgin Baylor versus Tom Chambers. Oof. And Shaq versus Amari Stoudemire. Just non-stop beatdowns. But this is the all-time imperialism team. So if there's a will, there's a way. Winner take all. Single elimination tournament. And hey, the Suns win the tip here in Los Angeles. It was meant to be. I tried to help them avoid, but it looks like the Suns have a date with Destiny, a date with the Lakers. Tom Chambers posting up, and he kicks it back out. Sean Marion. Y'all ever seen Sean Marion's jump shot? Five stars. Highly recommend. <laughs> Steve Nash, speaking of jump shots, open for three. Misses with a late contest from Jerry, the logo West. And we got James Worthy, big game James, bringing the ball up the court. Kicks it to Jerry West. Who kicks it to Shaq? I don't know what this play is, but hopefully it's a Shaq ISO. Kobe Bryant running down a screen, and he's just going and getting fouled, and that's two points guaranteed. Kobe Bryant free throws are legendary. And in the first quarter, it's a back-and-forth game here into the second quarter. Still a close game. Third quarter, actually closer than you'd expect. Going into the fourth quarter, Lakers have a little bit of a lead now. Trying to extend it as you close out the fourth. Eight-point game, nine-point game. We may actually hop in, but it looks like the Lakers are saying no. We don't want to play these damn scrubs anymore. There's not even Charles Barkley on the Suns all-time teams. Why? I don't know. I actually just realized that. This is dumb. But it looks like the Suns are going to go away without a whimper as the Lakers continue to roll. Just dominated the second half. 117 to 99. Where is Charles Barkley? Why is Charles and Chris Webber not in the team? Anyway, Kobe Bryant had a great game, 22-4-6. Elgin Baylor, 22-8-8. and eight. Big game, James, 15-4-3-2. Jerry West, 14-5. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 13-6. Magic Johnson, 12-6-9. Nice. LeBron, 8-4-6 off the bench. Kawhi gave you seven as well. Really, where is... uh? They just didn't care about Charles Barkley. That's that's sad. Amari gave you 28-11, and, and that was really it. Only three guys scored double figures. Kevin Johnson, Sean Marion, and Amari Stoudemire. Steve Nash... <laughs> Don't matter how many MVPs you get, you only scored eight points 
in an elimination game. Jason Kidd, Asen, because he's got no J, did not bode well either. And Steve Nash is going to be the latest Laker. Actually had a stint, if y'all remember, for one season when he cut his hair and looked weird. And I guess he is taking over the starting point guard role, even though Magic Johnson, a 99 overall, Jerry West is a 97. They want to give Steve Nash starting point guard minutes. I guess, you know, we'll move. There's no, there's just too many good players. There's nothing to do. They just have 90s across the board. Anyway, the next 99 overall is going to be Kobe, Bean, Bryant, rest in peace. The new 99 overall Los Angeles Lakers as they have romped and rolled all over those poor Phoenix Suns. The Phoenix Suns tried and then the second quarter, they just faltered. So goodbye, Phoenix. Get the hell off my map as the Los Angeles Lakers, as always, whenever it comes to NBA 2K, start to grow big massive huge look at the lakers they're gonna be the overwhelming favorites no matter what happens and we'll make sure we check out this wheel and oh is that phoenix right there they tried to go on and take the lakers yeah well, get the hell off my wheel as the spinner gets thinner next team on the list going to be an eastern conference team oh the rockets again kind of gross i don't like repeat teams but uh if the rockets really want to play they got the Magic to the east and a couple of empty states to the north. Maybe the Utah Jazz, or they could be taking on the Lakers as well. Let's see what the arrow takes them to do. Spin the Wheel of Fortune, and they are going east. Yeah, we're going to give them... We're going to give them that state. They're known as Arkansas. A little bit of this action. Make sure you blow up and grow up in size. And boom, boom. Arkansas officially... Houston Rocket Nation, and who's going to get the overall bump for these Rockets? We're starting to look pretty mean as well. 299 overalls of their own. Hakeem Olajuwon, Tim Duncan, Moses Malone, Kevin Durant, James Harden. You know what? I won't give it to Kevin Durant because he's the new guy. He doesn't actually belong on the team. We'll give it to James Harden, get him a 96 overall. I don't want to give it to Moses Malone because there's no point in having 299 overall centers. And Kevin Durant, I mean, he, he came over from the other team, so we'll give it to Big Game James. And uh, hopefully he can play some defense or something. <laughs> Next team on the list is, well, that's the wrong one. There you go. Looking at the wheel. Spin, spin, spin to win. Which way do you want to go? Boston Celtics, who've been pretty quiet throughout this. Obviously, they have a legendary team of their own. Look at the map. Where should the Boston Celtics try to hunt? They've got a lot of Milwaukee Bucks here. Possible opportunity taken on the Nets. There's also this state here. I think that's Rhode Island. And they might be able to go after Maine as well. So a couple of options for them. Let's spin the wheel of fortune. Wheel Are they taking Rhode Island? Is that is that what I'm seeing? Is that what I'm seeing there? They want to take Rhode Island. Yes, sir. God, it's so tiny miny. That's what she said. But hey, this is worth the exact same as taking over the state of like Alaska. So there you go. Connecticut, Rhode Island, whatever. Boston getting a one overall bump. And that means Mr. Bill Russell is going to join the 99 overall club. Another team with two 99 overalls, Bob Cousy, John Havlicek. We do need to hopefully watch them at some point because we haven't seen them play a single game of basketball and the next team on the list is going to be the brooklyn nets i think the nets are in a pretty precarious spot because milwaukee took over new york right so you look at the the nets they already don't have land so theoretically they could take what is this new jersey and i think that's their only option without having to face the celtics or the bucks or to a lesser extent the philadelphia 76ers so Good luck, Brooklyn. Hopefully you spin the wheel in the right direction because uh, I got no promises for you. Here you go. Spin the wheel and that'll work. That's it. That's the only option they had. Yeah. Looks like they're going to be going after New Jersey, getting an overall bump as well. There we go. Brooklyn narrowly avoiding having to play another team. Going to get the smallest of smallest size boosts. But hey, this is how imperialism works. You take over all 50 states. It's not... You know, all 37 states, you get to take over all 50. All really 48, because Hawaii and Alaska don't count. Dr. J or Kevin Durant are going to be joining this squad. We'll give Dr. J the 99 overall club. Kevin Durant will be next. Jason Kidd, James Harden, Razan Petrovic, Vince Carter. I forgot he was on net. Kyrie Irving, of course, here as well. Just a really interesting franchise. Is Brooke Lopez, 
this man's better be here. Yeah, Brooke Lopez, of course, set all the records for Brooklyn because, and it looks like the next team is the Sacramento Kings. All right. All right, Sacramento. How you looking out there? I know you got to deal with the, the Lakers at some point. Whole bunch of purple there. Probably going to be taking over Idaho. Worst case scenario, they're going to have to take on the Milwaukee Bucks. Not a great spot for the Kings to be, but I think they're going to have a good opportunity to spin, to win. They got a good team. Don't forget, Oscar Robertson is pretty much a beast, and they just want to immediately take on the Bucks. Well, <laughs> that sucks for both of you because somebody's going to go home. Fun matchup here. I, of course, have the Bucks, but the Kings upset the Warriors last time, and you never know who they're going to upset this time around. Oscar Robertson versus Walt Frazier, battle of the 99 overalls. Mitch Richmond versus Oscar Robertson. Y'all remember we bumped Oscar up to the two guard, and he's a great scorer, man. Peja Stoyakovich versus Marquez Johnson. That's going to be weird. Jerry Lucas versus Giannis, and Wilt Chamberlain versus Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Honestly, I don't know how the Bucks are so good. They had Oscar Robertson and Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Now they have Giannis. I mean, they, they've just been weirdly lucky for a team that most people don't even know where Milwaukee is. But the Kings do, in fact, win the tip. Oscar Robertson bringing the ball up the court. Looks like they got a pin down screen for Peja. Nope. Or Lucas. Nope. Or Mitch Richmond. They just posting him up against Oscar. Oscar versus Oscar. Always my favorite matchup. And Giannis brings down the ball. We should have had Oscar guard Oscar. That just would have been battle of the two best point guards in the game and an open three gets missed a tipping gets missed and nobody is able to score mitch richmond bringing the ball up the court guarded by oscar should we just have a team of oscar robertson's play a team of oscar robertson's who do you think would win we already did that joke with mikhail bridges earlier last season mitch richmond gets the ball deep paint position and he's gonna shoot over oscar robertson <laughs> oscar robertson grabs the ball and kicks it up to oscar robertson who's dribbling oscar now guarded against oscar ironically kicks it to oscar antetokounmpo who goes and slams it down the first points of the game is oscar antetokounmpo with the mean poster the statue of liberty is it what qualifies as a statue of liberty dunk anyway going into simcast and we have a close game here in the first quarter bucks jumping out to a little bit of lead by halftime about a 9 10 point game here in the third quarter still a 10 point game the kings are just hanging around if they can go on a little bit of run here in the fourth quarter they'll be able to make this competitive Still, the Bucks have about an 11-point lead here, up escalating it up to about 15, and it looks like the Kings cannot win a single quarter. Looks like Oscar Robertson is going to lose to Oscar Robertson, 144 to 110. Oscar Robertson scored 29 and 10. You love to see that. Marquez Johnson, 26 for him. Ray Allen, 20 and 8. Green was solid, 16 and 13. Sidney Moncrief, 14. Walt Frazier, 13 and 18. And of course, Giannis, 13, 7 and 8. Shot 6 of 9 from the field. Nice. As for the Kings, Wilt the Still was their best player and nobody scored in 20 point bunches. 19 and 6 for him. Mitch Richmond gave you 18. Oscar Robertson gave you 14 11. Honestly, a disappointing game from Oscar Robertson. Peja Stojakovic, 12. Jerry Lucas, 12, 6, and 9. Nice. Tiny Nate Archbold, 11 and 8. And Boogie Cousins gave you 11. Who did not show up? Really, just the whole team didn't play well enough to battle against Oscar Robertson. That's going to happen when Oscar Robertson is going up against Oscar Robertson. Is the joke old yet? Unfortunately, the Kings go on the offensive and they lose in embarrassing fashion. Officially get deleted. I think the smart move is to bring over the best player from the Sacramento Kings, and that's Oscar Robertson. So now you have Oscar Robertson at the one, Oscar Robertson at the two. Wow, they want to start Walt Frazier over him. Okay, Oscar Robertson coming off the bench with Oscar Robertson, then Marquez Johnson, Giannis, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I just feel like, you know, you want to get the best player on the best team. So Oscar is a little bit better than Oscar, if you ask me. <laughs> this is dumb. Should we change Oscar Robertson to being a shooting guard so he gets a little bit more minutes? I'm going to do it. <laughs> and we'll make sure Oscar Robertson instead is a point guard. Yeah, that makes about as much sense as this entire video has. Should we give Oscar Robertson the overall bump as well? I did not mean to try to change Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's name. We'll give it to Giannis right yeah we'll bump Giannis up to a 97 overall that is gonna do it for your Milwaukee Bucks dominating the Sacramento Kings that means we need to get them off with the wheel go to here press this button and the Sacramento Kings get the hell off of my wheel as the spinner gets thinner it looks like we have nine teams left in the rotation Los Angeles Lakers always a scary team where are they gonna try to march to you look at them on the map say all right LA you got Utah you got Idaho possibly, and you got the Rockets and the Bucks. Gonna be uh gonna be gonna be unfortunate for whoever has to try to stop 
the Los Angeles Lakers spin the wheel of truth, spin the wheel of justice, and they are going after, I guess, the Rockets, right? Mm, we're going to do Lakers at Rockets. That seems the most appropriate. Lakers at the Rockets, two superpowers certainly taking each other on. Magic Johnson versus Calvin Murphy, Kobe Bean Bryant versus James Harden, Kevin Durant versus James Worthy, LeBron James versus Tim Duncan, and Moses Malone versus Shaquille O'Neal. Honestly, this should be more of a finals matchup than an actual middle of the video matchup, but hey, we do as the spinner decides, and it looks like Shaquille O'Neal loses the tip. And Calvin Murphy and the Rockets look to upset those dominant Los Angeles Lakers who are always gods in simulation. James Harden just pulling up right in Kobe's face and Kobe laughs. Kobe points and laughs. James Worthy brings the ball up to court. LeBron James, the Laker, pulls up in somebody else's face. I think that was Tim Duncan and he misses. Really poor shot selection going on. Somebody runs some offense here. James Harden going to be pulling up. Thought about it. Now Tim Duncan has the ball. Nowhere to go. Kicks it to Calvin Murphy who's got a huge one foot height disadvantage against Magic Johnson. That's not what you want to see. And Calvin tries to do a layup, tries to get fancy. Shaquille O'Neal says, get that out of here. And now we have Magic versus <laughs> Tiny Calvin. That's, <laughs> they really should be exploiting that every single position. Doesn't look like they're going to this time around. LeBron James just goes right around and throws it down. LeBron James schools Timmy Duncan on the perimeter. And that is to be expected. Hopping into SimCast, Lakers have a little bit of lead here in the first quarter, back and forth game going into the second quarter, and the Rockets are upsetting the Lakers right now. Can you believe it now? Going into the third quarter, look at the scoreboard. The hometown Rockets are rolling. How's that for alliteration? Going into the fourth quarter, Lakers might be able to go on a run. They have a 15-point deficit here. Got to make it up quickly. 15-6 fourth quarter here. Eight-point game, seven-point game. I'm not going to fast Simcast because I think there's a chance, but the Lakers need to step on the gas pedal. Otherwise, they're going to come up just a little bit short. 10-point game here. One minute left. They can't score. Nine-point game. 11-point game. And the Rockets look like they're going to upset the Los Angeles Lakers. Unreal. Unbelievable. Kevin Durant carries the Rockets. 28, 8, and 9. James Harden, 26, 4, and 7. Timothy Duncan, 23, 11, and 6. Hakeem the Dream Olajuwon 16 and 7. Clyde Drexler 15, 3 and 7. And T Mac gave you a 14 and 10. As for the Lakers, they tried, man. Magic Johnson gave you a 25, 3 and 6 on 13 shots. Shaq gave you a 21 and 8. Big game, James 17. Kobe only 16 points of his own. LeBron 15 points. It was a good competitive game, but overall, the Lakers, interestingly, come up a little bit short. Who would have thought that? And fairly early, all things being equal, into this imperialism, the Lakers get eliminated. And the Houston Rockets are starting to look like they're going to be the new superpowers of imperialism as the Lakers. Gone. Purple and gold say good night. Laker Nation, you're going to have to come in. If there's one person we want to upgrade upon, no offense to everything that Calvin Murphy brought us at 5'9", but he just needs a little bit of a hype boost, and that means... Magic Johnson is now a rocket. And look at this collection of talent they picked up. Magic, James Harden, Kevin Durant, Tim Duncan, Moses Malone, Hakeem Olajuwon, Al Ming. What a team this rocket squad is turning into. And it looks like they might have an all 99 starting lineup soon. We will give James Harden that next overall boost up to a 97. So they have 99, 99, 99, 97, 97, 97. <laughs> the Rockets are ready to win this whole damn Thing. And the Lakers get the hell off my wheel as the spinner gets thinner. We only have eight teams left and the Brooklyn Nets are going to be next up on the list. Always in a precarious spot are the Brooklyn Nets. You look at them on the map and they're like, oh, we're kind of surrounded by everybody right now. So they got the Boston Celtics to the northeast, the Boston Celtics. They got the Bucks to the north. They got the 76ers to the west and they can't go south. So pretty much they're going to have to be playing somebody Good luck, man. That's <laughs> that's all I got for you, Brooklyn Nets. Of course, their best players are the most recent players they had. Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, and James Harden. And that is Northwest. Ooh, is that Bucks or 76ers? I'm going to say, right, follow me on this. Because, because, right, let's say we're right here. Man, that's about as middle as you can go. Let's flip a coin. All right, here we go. Flipping a penny, apparently. I can voice over to Heads is you go north, you go to, what is it? The Bucks. Tails, you go south, you go to the 76ers. 
Bam, flip the coin and unlocked baby steps. But <laughs> we got an achievement and it looks like Tails, it looks like they'll be taking on the Philadelphia 76ers, Nets at Sixers. You know, I'm not sure we looked at this Nets squad, but they're led by the 99 overall Julius Irving. Of course, Kevin Durant just leaving was the second best player in history for them. Jason Kidd, back when it was the New Jersey Nets, was a stud. James Harden, Drazen Petrovic. I never watched his game, but apparently he's a very good player. Vince Carter back on the Nets. Kyrie Irving, of course. Derek Coleman, really 88 overall. Buck Williams. All right, Kenny Anderson. Uh, Brooke Lopez, of course, the best net in history if you look at the record books. Richard Jefferson was on the New Jersey Nets as well. Kenyon Martin, Otis Birdsong, Keith Van Horn. I think we have looked at them. Keith Van Horn, by the way, was a sharp shooter back in the day, but going to be a fun matchup. Jason Kidd versus Allen Iverson. James Harden versus the GOAT Michael Jordan. Julius serving versus the GOAT LeBron James. Kevin Durant versus Dolph Shaves. And Brooke Lopez versus Moses Malone. Obviously, I got all my money, all my pennies that we're going to flip on the Philadelphia 76ers, the home team, the higher all overall team, the 299 overall teams, the two GOAT teams, plus the answer Iverson. But hey, you never know. It's a one game winner take all experience. And LeBron James is eye swing up on the doctor and he just blows right by Dr. J, making him look silly. Did you even try to play defense there? Oof. And this is one of those classic matchups, Julius Irving versus Julius Irving, but Julius Irving is coming off the bench, so he won't be able to play one-on-one -on -one against Julius Irving as Julius kicks the ball up to Kevin Durant, who pulls up in Goat Jordan's face and misses and misses, and Brooke Lopez with the tip and gets his shit rejected. Kevin Durant does get the ball, but this is some high-flying offense going on here. Kevin Durant kicks the ball out of bounds. Nets ball. What is this camera angle? And Moses Malone says, not in my house, Brooke. Brooke Lopez on the inbound, and I don't know what this play is. Give it to Julius Serving. Sure, that'll work. Shot clock winding down. Four, three, two. Julius pulls up. Elbow misses. Brooke, no rebound. Gives it up to Allen Iverson. We'll be going on to the next score. Allen Iverson pulls up. Crosses up. He's got Jason Kidd on him. Grabs the screen. Nope, he's kicking it to LeBron. He's deferring to LeBron, and LeBron is going to go right around Dr. J again. He says, I got you cooked already. You don't even know it yet. Pulls up in his face and misses. A lot of misses when we watch. I will say that Julie Serving kicking the ball up to Jason Kidd, one of the best players in New Jersey Nets history. James Harden pulls up 4 3, and they take a commanding 3 to 2 lead. Hopping into Simcast at this point, and the Nets have a little bit of a lead here in the first quarter. Going into the second, they still have a commanding lead here in the third quarter, kind of blowing out the 76ers. The Sixers failing to respond. Two goats on their team, and they cannot figure out how to score. Now they're making a little bit of a comeback here, but it might be too little. Too late, 109-94, and it looks like the Philadelphia 76ers are going to lose to the New Jersey, also known as the Brooklyn Nets. Close game, but ultimately come up short, 117-112. AI, 24-10. Michael Jordan, only 16-7? Really? LeBron James, 15-7. Julie Serving, 14. I'm surprised. I really thought the Sixers would play better, but look at this. Moses Malone gave you 8-11. Dolph Shays gave you 9-6. Wes Unseld gave you a six and seven. What are these numbers? The Nets just played dominant defense. Look at Drazen Petrovic, 21 points. Vince Carter off the bench, 20 points. James Harden, 14, four and six. Kevin Durant, 14 and 10. Brook Lopez gave you 13 and eight. Kyrie Irving, 13. Julius Irving, 12. Huh, Jason Kidd, eight, five and seven. I'm not sure how they did it, but the Nets won and they won pretty easily as well. In this large stretch of land that the uh, Philadelphia 76ers were trying to capture, is officially Nets Nation. Interesting upset as the Philadelphia 76ers are the latest domino to fall. So I'm a little bit torn here because there's obviously LeBron James, you know, the GOAT. There's Michael Jordan, you know, the GOAT. And then there's Allen Iverson, a GOAT in his own right. But the the, the Nets really need a center. And I think Moses Malone is going to be the guy I will be taking. Because you look at their team, their center, if I can scroll any slower, is... I mean, they don't have one until what? Brooke Lopez. Yeah, Brooke Lopez is their highest rated center and also their only center. So Moses Malone immediately comes in and gives them a 97 overall. I know he's not the highest rated player on the 76ers, but they have Jason Kidd, James Harden, Julius Irving, Kevin Durant. They just needed a center and now they have one. So who's going to get the one overall bump starting to join the 99 overall squad? I will give it to Kevin Durant. Just kind of seems right now a 97 overall as well. And surprise of the day, the Philadelphia 76ers are gone. The spinner is getting thinner. 
only what three six seven teams left on the wheel as the orlando magic are coming up next to that and looking at the map you say all right magic you have to play somebody you're gonna be playing the hawks the rockets or the hawks <laughs> it's really it's really as simple as that my friends good luck Spin the wheel, spin the wheel. Which way do you want to go? And that looks like to me, you look at the map, it looks like the Rockets. So we're doing magic at the Rocket. We got Penny Hardaway versus Magic Johnson, James Harden versus Tracy McGrady, Grant Hill versus Kevin Durant, uh, LeBron James versus Timothy Duncan, Dwight Howard versus Moses Malone. Y'all already know who my money's on, but I think there's a chance, and I always say the same damn thing every single time, but the Magic have been upsetting teams recently. They got LeBron James on their team as well. Maybe LeBron will play well in simulation. And maybe the Magic will upset this kind of cobbled together Rocket squad that just has a bunch of 99s on their team that most of them aren't even Houston Rockets originally. Dwight Howard doing a jump hook. <laughs> a jump hook. Good luck, my friend. And this is Magic Johnson. That's right. I have to get my all-time greats remembered. Bringing the ball up the court. Kicks it to Kevin Durant. Just they don't look good in Rocket jerseys. I don't know how else to explain it. Getting a screen from Timothy Lee Duncan and Kevin Durant versus... Nobody, Timothy Duncan misses. That was kind of a weird pick and roll, but LeBron James coming up the court the other way. He pulls up from a long two. He misses as well. Dwight Howard flies in for the rebound, but does not get it. James Harden has the ball now in his hands. Going to get a screen from Tim Duncan. Nope, Tim's going to get the ball. He's going to pass it to an open Kevin Durant. Had uh, Dwight Howard on him, but he missed. And that is Moses Malone fighting on the boards. Nobody can make any buckets. We're almost a minute into this game. 0-0, zero, zero, even though there's all-time greats. Playing. Maybe it's all-time great defense, something that the All-Star game needs to look into. LeBron James has a ball isoed up on Moses Malone, grabs a screen. Tim Duncan closes out, and LeBron misses, but there's Dwight Howard on the putback. Can we get a can we get a normal score? Or is they just gonna be putbacks only? Like that's all I ever see go in is putbacks. Ah oh boy, Kevin Durant being picked up by Grant Hill right now. Gonna get a screen from Timothy Duncan. Gonna get the switch and Kevin Durant 4-3. Wow. <laughs> the most embarrassing air ball I've ever seen in my life. Tracy McGrady going to try to respond. James Harden playing defense if he can believe it. And look at that screen and roll. Dwight Howard getting two points. I didn't want to watch the highlight, but here it is. Look at this dunk. Oh my God. Isn't it completely unremarkable as we're hopping into Simcast. Magic have a 4-0 lead here in the first quarter and they have a commanding lead in the second. This is what I'm saying. The Magic just seem to play better. They've got great chemistry. They're upsetting the other teams. I say that. Maybe I jinx them now. Only a 13-point game here in the third quarter. 10-point game. Rockets can go on a little bit of a run there. They're going to make this competitive, but the Magic are trying to say no. They're trying to extend and hold on to this lead about 11 points, 109, 98. Four minutes left. The Rockets got to make a run quick. They've been trying 105, 111. Three minutes left. Nine-point game. Seven-point game. Score, Houston. Score, 109-116. That's not close enough to hop in. 111-116, five-point game, one minute, one second left. Rockets had the ball. They need a score and a stop. Magic Johnson, I swing up against Penny Hardaway. And I don't know what's happening, but he just shoots the ball over. And that's, who is that? Moses Malone with the long two? Yes, it is. Kind of would have liked the three at this point with uh, the double big lineup working. Yao Ming setting a screen, apparently. And Moses Malone cuts it to a single possession game. 116-113. LeBron James with the center on him. Pulls up wide open. Missed. LeBron James can't cl clutch bats. It's words. I'm five hours into recording. And Moses Malone steps out of bounds. He's choking. Tragic Malone. That's not his name. That's not what you want to see either from your superstar center is just stepping out of bounds for no reason in particular. Shaq subbing in. And Penny Hardaway bringing the ball up the court, being guarded by Magic Johnson. And he throws it away. Magic Johnson on the break. They're not going to push the pace. He doesn't know where he's going with his damn life. He's crossing over. He's stepping back. He's pulling up. One-handed jump shot. Misses. And the Rockets are going to have to play the foul game if they want to come out of here. Champions. It looks like every single team that has all the 99 overalls on their squad, they lose. I don't know what this is, but this is upset city. Is this March Madness already? Grant Hill going to inbound the ball, and LeBron James needs to hit some clutch free throws i think in 2k they believe he's a good free throw shooter so he's probably gonna make them both make this a really tough game to win for the rockets now a four point lead two possession game and the next one is up and in and the rockets need a score bad and they need a three if they can get one james harden great three-point shooter kevin durant great three-point shooter even magic 
showed that he had a jump shot at some point, but Hakeem Olajuwon just tries to take out his do-it-yourself kit. Gets blocked pathetically by Shaquille O'Neal. And the Rockets, man, they're just clutching, hanging on barely right now, but they need a score bad. Who's this play for? Probably Kevin Durant. Maybe Hakeem Olajuwon. There's James Harden, open for three. Splash. No, his foot was on the line. It was only a two-pointer. Oh, let's look at that and replay. I gotta see. I gotta I gotta verify as my own. Kicks it in. This camera angle sucks. And James Harden, just what are you doing? You you have a wide open three here and you make it a long two. Terrible shot. Low basketball IQ moment for James Harden as now they have to foul. They lose out on one point. That would have made it one possession game. Even if they make one of two free throws. And now it's back up to a four point game. Tracy McGrady trying to ice him out and does and now five point game desperation setting in for the houston rockets they need to run up the court quickly magic johnson dribbles kicks it james harden pulls it misses and that is game shaquille o'neal going to the free throw line gonna ice them out and the rockets fall to the orlando magic can you believe it hakeem fought scratched and clawed he was the only one who did 28 and 5 from him magic 18 9 and 7 stuffed the stat sheet Kevin Durant only gave you 15 points on 15 shots. James Harden 12 on 6 of 14 shooting. 0 of 7 from the 3 and did not even hit that 3-pointer in the clutch. Clyde wasn't all that great. Tracy McGrady gave you 10. Yao. Tim Duncan a little disappointing. 7, 10, 15 assists. But you want more than 7 points from someone who's a 99 overall. And Moses Malone only gave you 6 and 7. As for the Magic, LeBron James dominated. 31, 6, and 5. T-Mac 24, 7, 11. Penny 18, 5, and 13. Dwight Howard 15 and 8. Shaq 13 and 9. Vooch 10 and 3. And for whatever reason, the Magic upset the Houston Rockets. Honestly, had the Rockets is my favorite. So I think now it's going to be the, the Milwaukee Bucks, who are probably the highest rated team left in this rebuild. But wow. Not rebuild. Video series. Whatever you want to call it. I'm still kind of in shock that the uh, that the Rockets got whooped. By the magic but there it is that's how it goes in the nba imperialism the magic are taking over south america there is one two three four five six teams left here the magic need a power forward bad so i know timmy duncan didn't have a great game but i'm going to be sending him over to replace really grant hill maybe hito turkaloo whoever was trying to start and they're gonna have penny hardaway tracy mcgrady lebron james tim duncan and dwight howard slash sakil o'neal as their starting centers and the one overall bump is going to go to Tracy McGrady now up to a 98 overall. Impressive game from the Magic. Houston Rockets surprise upset and let's spin the wheel. Who's going to be next on the attack, next on the advance? Utah Jazz, Charlotte Hornets. Okay, we haven't heard a lot from them lately. Look at the Hornets and they could be going really, they could take on the Hawks or they could go north. Really it. You can't go south, really. You can't go east, really. It's just, uh, yeah, spin the wheel. Which way do you want to go? The Wheel of Fortune says the Charlotte Hornets, they want to take on the Hawks. Why does everybody only want to take on other teams? There are so many empty states. Look at all these states we got to fill out still. <laughs> We're going to have to do something like the last time where we just divvy up the states to the remaining teams because nobody wants to take these empty states. They're like, I'll take you and you and you. And no, I don't want West Virginia. I'm going to be honest, I don't know how either of these teams are actually still in the game, but hey, Kemba Walker versus Trey Young, Battle of the Undersized Scores, Eddie Jones versus Dominique Wilkins, Cliff Hagen versus Glenn Rice, Larry Johnson versus Pau Gasol, and Dikembe Mutombo versus Alonzo Mourning. Money's probably on the Hawks. As always, you never know what's going to happen, and Trey Young is always a problem on the defensive end, so if Kemba can exploit that, Kemba, of course, no stranger to being a defensive liability himself, but I think Kemba plays a little more active defense than Trey Young does. Maybe that'll be the difference in this game of all-time teams. And Dikembe Mutombo gets fouled immediately. We're not going to be watching free throws. We're just going to hop into Simcast to the Battle of the Butts. This is not a fun matchup. The Hawks here in the third quarter. Actually having a pretty close game back and forth. Almost into the fourth quarter. About a 15-point lead here. The Hornets are trying to make a game out of it. But it looks like they're going to come up a little bit short now. A 20-point deficit as the Hawks completely roll. Not really an impressive or fun game to say the least. But the Hawks... Do what they do best, and that is dominate. Bob Pettit, 26 and 10. Cliff Hagen, 18 and 12. Pau Gasol, 18 and 11. Trey Young, 17 and 13. Dominique Wilkins, 17 and 6. Lou Hudson, 14. Joe Caldwell, 
had a pretty good game as well. As for the Hornets, Eddie Jones, 20 and 9. Okay. Kemba Walker, 19 and 14. Larry Johnson, 19. Alonzo Morning, 17 and 10, but not enough help from guys like Del Curry and Vladi Divok. And that's why this team isn't that good. <laughs> Hornets lose in fairly unimpressive fashion as let's get their logo off the damn Mac. The Atlanta Hawks are growing and there is only six teams left. Hornets are sitting over Glenn Rice, who's a 91 overall. I mean, he's not even going to really crack the rotation more than maybe 20 minutes a night. But hey, you know, you, you win some, you lose some. And in this case, the Hawks did, in fact, win. Now to go back to the Wheel of Doom, the Wheel of Justice. Hornets, get the hell off my list. And spinning the wheel one more time to see who's going to go next. Is it the Utah Jazz or the Magic? It's the Magic, the Upset Kings magic what direction do the magic want to go they can really take a whole bunch of states they could take on the jazz they could take on the hawks it really depends on what direction this arrow says as long as it doesn't say south don't go down that's kind of downish that's uh is that the hawks should we just do the hawks get this out of the way as well it's gonna be magic at the hawks sure game Penny Hardaway versus Trey Young going to be a defensive liability. Tracy McGrady versus Dominique Wilkins will be fun. LeBron James versus Cliff, Cliff Hagen. Tim Duncan versus Pau Gasol. Dikembe Mutombo versus Dwight Howard. Definitely an interesting one. I, I have the magic, hands down, easily. I'll take the plus 500 odds, but you never know. Although I do think that the Hawks are probably the most unimpressive team left in this video. Even though the Celtics have played like twice, they still like the Lakers have the best team ever as LeBron James has taken ridiculous Steph Curry threes. Pau Gasol almost steps out of bounds. I feel like we keep seeing the same animations. Like the the AI script for whoever's playing this just keeps doing the same thing over and over. Trey Young misses a wide open three because what else is new for Atlanta Hawks fans? Penny Hardaway dribbling the ball. Who's this play going to? Is it going to LeBron? Is it going to Tim Duncan? Is it going to Dwight Howard? It's going to nobody. LeBron going to be open for three. Doesn't know what to do with all this space. Now pulls up. No, he gives it away. Tim Duncan takes a contested two, and he makes it. Do we really need a highlight of this? It was a contested two-point jumper. Come on now. Hop it into SimCast, and you got the Magic taking a little bit of a lead here in the first quarter, going into the second quarter. Hawks are trying to fight back, but they don't have the firepower, and now they do. They take the lead here into the fourth quarter. The Magic only scored 17 points in the third quarter. Are the Magic going to get upset now? Six minutes left. It's a seven-point game. Nine-point game. Seven-point game. The Hawks are just dominating. This entire second half, the Magic are going to be held under like 40 points for the entire second half as the Hawks walk away victors. I counted them out. I doubted them. And they won 114 to 95. Dominique Wilkins had a dominant performance. 37, 3, and 4 steals. Cliff Hagen gave it 23. Trey Young, 16, and 7. Lou Hudson, 14, and 4. Glenn Rice, 10. Pau Gasol, 8, and 12. Wow, the Magic just disappointed. Penny was good. 22 for him. T Mac was okay, 14 and 12. LeBron, 14, 6 and 8. Timmy D, 14 and 7. Grant Hill, 12 and 2. The centers just got worked. Wow, did not expect the Magic to lose, but there you have it. Another upset in the books. All this territory that the Magic were able to claim is going to be taken away, going officially to your Atlanta Hawks, who have now taken over the South of their own. Kind of weird seeing the Magic disappear off the map, and now. The teams are getting fewer and fewer and weirdly less talented. It seems like the more players that you have on your team that are good, the more likely they are to lose. So the Hawks need a point guard and Penny Hardaway is here at 94 overall. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take LeBron James, send him over to the Hawks and drop him down to play the point guard position over Trey Young. Playing his natural point guard position, which means their rotation going to look like this LeBron James, Dominique Wilkins, Cliff Hagen, Pau Gasol, and Dikembe Mutombo. I would say a team of world beaters, but LeBron James is there and they got a serviceable team. Glenn Rice also coming off the bench. Can't forget about big baby Glenn going into the browser. The magic are gone. The spinner gets thinner. Five teams left. Celtics, probably the favorites to win it all. Bucks certainly there as well as the Celtics, just as I spoke about them, are next on the list. So where are the Celtics going to go? They can take Maine. They can take on the Nets or they can take on the Bucks. It's really as simple as that. Not a lot of opportunity for for losing yourself here as we spin the wheel of fortune and they can't you can't go that way. You literally you can't. You just can't. There's there's no possible way for you to go that way. And it looks like it's going to be Celtics at Yeah, that's about as Bucksian as it gets. So Celtics at the Bucks, let's go. 
What up y'all, Airball from the future here. Now I did miss recording the simcast of this, but you didn't miss anything. There is one minute, 57 seconds left of this Boston Celtics at the Milwaukee Bucks game. Celtics have a one point lead and the ball in their hands. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar just reverse dunked it. And now the Celtics need to get a dagger bucket. Somebody named Cohens has the ball being picked up full court by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Larry Bird passes it. John Havlicek passes it. Kevin McHale dribbling up on ISO. That's not a mismatch. And John Havlicek gets his shit rejected. Sidney Moncrief kicks it up to Oscar Robertson. He's got Larry Legend on him. Is he a defensive liability? Could be. Giannis now with the ball in his hands, kicking it to Walt Frazier, who's left wide open for three. And the putback from Sidney Moncrief gives the Bucks a one point lead. First lead of the game that I know of. Walt Frazier now trying to play defense. Bob Cousy just pulls up and misses. And now the Celtics need to get a stop. Oscar Robertson bringing the ball up the other way. Larry Legend trying to guard him. Larry, not a great defender, but he's seriously... Oh my God, Oscar just threw it away to nobody. Bob Cousy bringing the ball up the court. Does a half spin. Dribbling. Doesn't know where to go with the ball. Kicks it. Kevin McHale kicks it. Larry Bird loses the ball. Fumbles the ball. Got a wide open lane to the paint. What is happening? These animations are getting silly. And Larry Legend takes the lead with a little left hand floater. 140, 139. We got a close one here in Boston. No, in Milwaukee. Giannis inbounding the ball to Walt Frazier, who's got Larry Legend on him now. Is Larry playing point guard as now he's throwing the ball away? Why are these 99 overalls terrible point guards? Stop throwing the ball away for no reason. Bob Cousy with the mean Euro puts the Celtics up three points. Did you know they had the Euro step back in 1955? Or whatever year Bob Cousy played. That was beautiful. Oscar Robertson and the Bucks need to respond. Unfortunately, Giannis can't shoot. Offense has to be generated somewhere else right now. It looks like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is too close to the basket. That's two points right back. 37 seconds left in the game. 13 point point differential. 13 point shot clock differential. That's probably the word I'm looking for. Bob Cousy has the ball. Going to drain the clock as much as he can. Hopefully get an open shot for Larry Legend or John Havlicek splash and that is a four point lead now for the boston celtics leaving them wide open for three the celtics have only played one or two games in this imperialism series but they are rocking and rolling bucks looking to respond taking it to kareem abdul jabbar who's almost going out of bounds oscar too close to the basket gets blocked pathetically sydney moncrief puts it back up and he gets a bucket and now it's time to play the foul game. Boston Celtics call their last timeout. Bob Cousy gets the ball. Bob Cousy gets fouled. And he's going to have to make some free throws. If he makes two, it's a two possession game. If he misses one, Bucks have a chance to tie it up. And that is an ugly looking free throw shot. Doesn't matter though, because it goes in the short shorts. Shine. And he misses the second one. There's still a chance. Three point game. AI doesn't know about fouling when you're up by three points. But here you are. Giannis pulling up from three. Misses. Kareem grabs the rebound, kicks it to Frazier. And he misses it. Kareem slams it back down, but there's only four seconds left. This is going to be game. The AI is going to fumble the bag here as Bob Cousy gets the ball. 3.4 seconds left. Damn, Giannis can't shoot. And that means that Giannis and the Bucks fall to the Celtics. Unless a full court shot goes in, which it never does in 2K. Cousy makes both free throws and Oscar Robertson going to pull up three quarter court and that is game the boston celtics eliminate the milwaukee bucks all because Giannis can't shoot great game from both teams honestly kareem had a good one 26 and 10 Matt, uh, marquez johnson 21 points from him in 24 minutes oscar robertson was solid 19 6 and 8 and oscar robertson was solid 19 4 and 8 sydney monkey gave you 19 and 7 Giannis 16 9 and 9 but just came up short with that missed three-pointer Ray Allen probably should have been on the court when you're down by three, but Bob Cousy had a ridiculous game. 36 points, 13 assists. John Havlicek, 24 and 8. Kevin McHale, 24 and 9. Kevin Garnett gave you a 16. Larry Bird, only 15 points and 21 shots. Paul Pierce went 5 of 5 for 12 points, 7 assists off the bench. Great game, but the Celtics do advance. The Celtics don't really need anybody. I'm going to go ahead and send them over Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. They do have Bill Russell, who's a 99. Larry Bird. I mean, uh, the other option is to give him Walt Frazier. But that feels wrong because Bob Cousy's here. He's the point guard. And then the other option is Giannis. But Giannis can't shoot. So we're going to go ahead and give him their backup center of the future. I mean, 
that's sure. Nothing's going to change for the Celtics lineup. They got so many good players of their own. And we'll go ahead and give who's not a 99 overall at this point. Larry Bird's 99. Bill Russell, 99. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 99. And we'll give Bob Cousy that one overall boost. Now a 97 overall. Theoretically, we could give it to John Havlicek and then bring over Walt Frazier to be the other 99 overall. But Walt Frazier's on the Knicks anyway. He doesn't even count. Anyway, the Celtics going to advance as the Bucks do in fact fall now there is only four teams left milwaukee get the hell off the spinner as the spinner does get thinner and there's not a lot of other teams here there's only four teams but there's just not a lot of places for them to go at this point you look at the map there's a whole bunch of middle states that nobody wants so what i'm thinking is we have all right hear me out we're gonna have a tournament because nobody wants all these strips of land apparently we're gonna have the nets versus the celtics we're gonna have the jazz versus the hawks and we're just going to erase this off the map. I'm not even going to acknowledge these states just like politicians. Okay, you guys didn't recycle. You didn't reduce or reuse. You kept drinking water out of plastic bottles. And now global warming took over and all of the ice caps melted. So we're going to do a tournament. Boston Celtics at the Nets. Utah Jazz versus the Hawks to see who's going to finish out this map. All right, time to determine who is the first team on the list and who's going to get home court advantage. So it looks like the Boston Celtics are going to be marching on the road and they will be taking on the Brooklyn Nets. Here we go, Celtics on the offensive against the all-time Brooklyn Nets. Bob Cousy versus Jason Kidd, gonna be a good matchup. Bill Sherman versus James Harden. Larry Bird versus Julius Irving. Kevin McHale versus Kevin Durant. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar versus Moses Malone. Why is John Havlicek coming off the bench? Here we are, the semifinals of NBA imperialism of all time teams. I know we took out some of the states that just were gonna take forever. The problem is there's so many states that have so many overalls and it's going to take a long time and they just they give you a one point overall these guys are already super good there's basically all 99s in the starting lineup so i feel like it's okay to just skip over some of the busy work skip over the boring bits and just get right to the action that action is in brooklyn celtics versus the nets definitely a good matchup here celtics have all the history on their side the nets are trying to bring in some young history they've got a young Kyrie irving and james harden and uh kevin durant Julius Irving is an old holdover. Jason Kidd, kind of modern, kind of not really, as you take a three and miss. I don't know who that was, but that was not a good look for the Celtics as we have a defensive masterpiece, a clinic being put on right now. Kevin Durant being guarded by, is this Kevin McHale? Is this a Kevin on Kevin crime here? Lots of Ks going on. Alliteration, Kevin Durant going to go around and he's just going to, oh, he gets fouled as we are going to hop into Simcast here. Battle of the East Coast, Brooklyn and boston baby lots of bees here in the third quarter we have a back and forth game here really high scoring contest going into the fourth quarter celtics have a little bit of a lead but the nets are fighting back now they have a little bit of a lead as well 121 125 hopefully this is an epic matchup two dominant superpowers two minutes left we're going to be hopping in 133 132 two minutes 15 seconds left in the game julia serving inbounding the ball and let's go I don't even know who to root for at this point. Both teams are just so stupidly stacked. You want to root for history with the Celtics or do you want to root for uh, for modern basketball with the Brooklyn Nets? Julie Serving going to be open, passes it up. Had a wide open shot there and he just didn't want to take it. James Harden, no stranger to taking shots, splashes the three, two point lead for the Brooklyn Nets. First lead tonight. That's actually wrong, but it's fine. <laughs> Bob Cousy being picked up by James Harden and John Havlicek open for three. Answers right back. 136, 135. They're throwing haymakers at each other right now. John Havlicek splash. James Harden splash. What do the Brooklyn Nets have in store? Only one minute, 48 seconds left. James Harden, is he just going to ISO up on Bob Cousy here? He is. He's going to go around and he tries to draw the foul. Ends up getting stripped as well. Bob Cousy bringing the ball up the other way. Didn't have anybody in transition, and now he's just dribbling, waiting for somebody to come set a screen. Looks like he's isoed up on Dr. J. I don't like that matchup, but he goes right around him. Dr. J was a traffic cone. What are you doing, doctor? Ooh, that defense was embarrassing. James Harden has to come over to play help defense. That was how bad your defense was. Nets down by three. One minute, 20 seconds left. They need to get a bucket soon. Haven't seen Kevin Durant touch the ball. Looks like James Harden's just going to try to take out his do-it-yourself kit, and he misses Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Vacuums up the rebound. John Havlicek bringing the ball up the other way. Pulls up. That's not a good shot. Didn't waste any time. Didn't get a good look. That was a contested jumper, and he just took it. Okay, the door is still open. 
for the Brooklyn Nets. Kevin Durant finally getting his first touch and it seems like forever. Being picked up by Havlicek. Moses Malone versus Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Who he got? Jump. And he gets so wanted. But James Harden picks up the three. And he gets fouled on the three-pointer. Okay, one of the most scary opportunities for all NBA players. Down by three. Got to make three free throws to tie the game. First one is up. And James Harden chokes. Choke artist. Hold the throat, Reggie. That's a choke job. James Harden can't even make one. And now one for two. Need this, and it's a one-point game. Splash. Boy, James Harden, if he didn't choke that, we'd have a tie game here. But there is 50 seconds left in the game. Bob Cousy bringing the ball up to court. And I hope this play goes to Larry Bird. But Bob Cousy's taking a fading three and missing. That is not what you want to see. Set your feet, Bob. Set your feet, Bobbert. James Harden looking to do everything. Just jacks up a three of his own. Misses, and they do not get the rebound. This is going to be the last possession before we play the foul game. The Nets need to stop. Bob Cousy. And they're just fouling. All right. They, 2K is dumb. That's all it is. They're like, we're not going to foul. And then they go, actually, we're going to foul. Well, now you're down by three. James Harden's probably going to jack up another shot as Bob Cousy makes both of his clutch free throws. Hopefully, they can get an after timeout play drawn up for Kevin Durant because this man is not getting the touches that he needs. James Harden is just jacking up every shot like he's Steph Curry, man. Like he's Trey Young. And here's James, in fact, getting the ball and they call another time. 2K is so dumb. Okay, no timeouts left. Inbounding the ball yet again. James Harden calling for it. Looks like he's not going to get it. Looks like it goes to Kevin Durant, who gives it to James Harden, who pulls up for three. Contested hand in his face. Misses Moses Malone on the glass. Gets the foul. Maybe could have been an and one call, but there you go. One point game. They need to play the foul game. And John Havlicek is going to pit. It picked up. Have to go to the free throw line to make some clutch free throws. I don't know why we're looking at this guy when John Havlicek needs to shoot free throws. Look at him. Look at his face animate. And Splash makes the first one. Second one to make it a three-point game. Stance up and in. Two for two. It's a three-point game. 20 seconds left. James Harden is going to have to jack up a three and miss embarrassingly. Otherwise, the Celtics are going to be... Oh, James Harden pulling up. And that's game. I wish the AI in 2K was any good, but it's really not. As now Kevin McHale going to the free throw line to ice this game out. 11 seconds left. Nets are going to need a miracle. And unfortunately with the AI situation, they are not going to get one. Two for two. Now a five point game. James Harden once again getting the ball. Probably not going to pass it. Oh, he does. Kevin Durant pulls up for three. And that was the first shot KD took. And it was a miss as the Nets fall 144-139. Moses Malone had a great game. 28 and 8. Kevin Durant, 25 and 6. James Harden, 17, 5 and 10 on 11 shots, but he just started heaving in the fourth quarter, especially when they needed to play efficiently. He said, nah, I got this. Drazen Petrovic, 17 points. Julius Serving, 13, 6 and 7. Jason Kidd, 12 and 5. Kyrie Irving, 11 off the bench. And Vince Carter gave you 10, but the Celtics just relentless with all of their talent. John Havlicek, 22 and 14. Larry Bird, 20 and 10. Jojo White gave you 20 points off the bench and 6 assists in 23 minutes. Kareem, 18 and 10. Bob Cousy, 16 and 11. Kevin McHale, 15 and 10. Paul Pierce, 13 off the bench. Bill Russell, 11. Even Dave Cohen's contributed 9 and 9. The lowest scoring Boston Celtic was 9 points and 9 rebounds. That's how you're going to win NBA imperialism. And the Nets have been eliminated. And we'll go ahead and color this in and say goodbye, Brooklyn. We're going to start to have a battle here as we round out NBA imperialism. Only three teams left. And we need to determine if it's the Hawks or if it's the Jazz. Hop into the spinner. Make sure the Nets are gone. Get the hell off my list as the spinner gets thinner. If it lands on the Celtics, we're just going to keep spinning. But it looks like the offensive team is going to be the Hawks. That means the Utah Jazz are defending home court. And don't think that I forgot. Make sure that we have Julius Irving now on the Boston Celtics as well. That is 499 overalls. And once Bob Cousy gets his overall bump, I guess theoretically, with however midseason progression works, even though I turned it off, that is bam, five overall 99. So you look at their roster and rotation. Now you got Bob Cousy, Bill Sherman, Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, Julius Irving. We'll drop him down to play the two. So do something like this. Bob Cousy, John Havlicek, Julius Serving, Larry Bird, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Bill Russell, 99 off the bench. Kevin McHale, Dave Cohens, Jojo White, Paul Pierce. I mean, the Celtics are just a stacked team. It's been a while since we played with the Jazz, but they still have a very respectable team. So you have LeBron James versus John Stockton. That don't seem fair. Dominique Wilkins versus Pistol Pete Maravich. 
Cliff Hagen versus Carmelo Anthony, Carl Malone versus Pau Gasol, and Dikembe Mutombo versus Mark Eaton. Hopefully, this one turns out to be good because it is the last or second to last match before we end up taking on the Boston Celtics to determine who is the true Imperial captain of America. And spoilers, it might be Elon Musk. Anyway, uh, Dominique Wilkins just pulled a zero IQ move here and just stepped out of bounds on the first possession of the game. Nice. <laughs> Melo bringing the ball up the court the other way. Has an open shot. Has a step back three. Has a miss baby. And Dominique Wilkins looking to redeem himself after that embarrassing zero IQ play. Brings the ball up the court. Now LeBron James has it being guarded by, wow, Kevin McHale or uh, who is that? Pete Maravich? Yeah, no chance. LeBron James going to fly. LeBron James going to sky walk. Pistol Pete bringing the ball up the court the other way. Just takes a step back three of his own and he misses. We do... <laughs> We just see such low scoring games whenever we hop in. Like in Simcast, all the stats look fine and they look normal and solid. But then when we hop in, the only shots that ever get made are putbacks on the offensive end. That's it. Maybe it's because the difficulty is too high, you know? Dominique Wilkins with the floater and the Hawks have a 4 nothing lead out here in Utah. Going into Simcast, they have a lead into the second quarter. How about a halftime? It's about a 21 point game and this looks like it's going to be a blowout. Looks like we're going to have battle of the two elder squads, Hawks and the Boston Celtics, unless the Jazz have anything to say, and it doesn't look like they do. This one is a complete blowout. 154-124. John Stockton had a game, 29-6. and six. Carl Malone was serviceable, 16-10, and 10, and just not enough help. Gordon Hayward gave him 16-16. 16. Adrian Dantley gave you 15. Carmelo, only 14 points on 12 shots. Pistol Pete, 14 points on 14 shots as well. 10 assists for him. Just too many shooting guards, not enough scoring. I mean, Rudy Gobert got 19 minutes. Oof. As for the Hawks, LeBron had a monstrous game. 34, 7, and 12. Cliff Hagan, 22, 5, and 7. Lou Hudson gave you 22 points in 20 minutes. Dominique Wilkins, 21, and 7. Bob Pettit, 19, 6, and 8. Pau Gasol. Hey, the Hawks just performed, man. And there you have it. The Utah Jazz are gone. The final two teams left on the board are the Atlanta Hawks and the Boston Celtics. And of course, this middle ocean of America. Y'all said we were in a drought. Not anymore. We are the drought. That doesn't even make sense. Anyway, we will just determine who is going to be the home court advantage and who's going to be the attacking team. I forgot to take the Utah Jazz off the list. It's fine, right? It won't select the Jazz, will it? It does. Jazz, unfortunately, you win. You're gone. Get off this list. Celtics at the Hawks. Battle of NBA all-time imperialism. And the winner is going to be the Hawks. That means the Hawks are on the offensive they're going to be trying to march into Boston. Good luck, Atlanta. Carl Malone going over to the Jazz, and we'll give Dominique this one overall boost so that he joins the 99 overall squad as well. Bam. And we have the final battle. Celtics at the Hawks. I made this a Game 7 of the NBA Finals. LeBron James taking on Bob Cousy. Dominique Wilkins versus John Havlicek. Julie Serving versus Cliff Hagen. Pau Gasol. Still starting over 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 Carl Malone? I don't know about that. He's like four overalls lower. No, Carl Malone versus Larry Bird. Heck of a matchup. And Dikembe Patumbo versus Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. This is it for all the marbles. Game seven of the NBA Finals. Game seven of NBA Imperialism. The last game, the final battle, the epic wins. Uh, any other cringeworthy stuff I can say. Anyway, the Celtics versus the Hawks. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar gets the ball, taken up. Battle of the Giants, Dikembe Mutombo versus Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Honestly, going to be a heck of a matchup, and Kareem just throws the ball away. LeBron James bringing the ball up the court the other way. We're going to probably watch maybe five minutes of the first as floater alert. Karl Malone grabs the offensive rebound, and Kareem says, that's my ball. Flying, skying, and blocking Karl Malone the same way that the... <laughs> Don't say that. Bob Cousy bringing the ball around. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar looking like he wants to skyhook here on... I don't know what's happening. Nothing's happening. This is weird. Bob Cousy has the ball. Four seconds left. Wide open three for John Havlicek. And miss. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar does a weird putback, but that goes in? Okay, Kareem. 18 points per game this season. Kareem is a beast in the paint. Kimmy Mutombo throws the ball away. Bob Cousy jumps the passing lane, and he's going up for a white man layup. Who needs highlight dunks when you can have fundamentals? Bob Cousy lays it up off the glass, and it is a 4-0 lead for the Celtics. Hawks going to need to answer soon. LeBron James needs to go LeBron mode. He needs to go Carl Malone takeover mode. He needs to go give the ball to LeBron. Wide open in the corner for three. Not really. That's another miss and the Hawks cannot buy a bucket right now. 
Kareem kicking it to Bird, kicking it to Kuzi. What are these rosters? What are these legends that we are playing with? Kuzi gives it to Havlicek, and this play looks like it's going for Larry. Legend, the Bird, man, splash. Ugh. He missed, and LeBron James brings the ball up the court the other way. Already been almost two minutes, and it is a 4 0 game. Real barn burner, if you ask me. Carl Malone looking to set a screen. Never mind, he gets rejected. Now he's going to set it again. And Hagen goes around. Wide open, mid range, miss. Boy, the Hawks cannot buy a bucket right now. They have scored zero points in the first two minutes of this game seven finals. Kareem being picked up weirdly by Carl Malone and Bob Cousy versus LeBron James. Larry Bird open from the elbow, and he misses. Matumbo snatches that rebound from Kareem. Zero points in the last two minutes, zero points in the first two minutes. The Hawks cannot find their offense right now. They got LeBron James. They got Dominique Wilkins, 99 overall. They got Carl Malone, and they cannot get any points. Dominique just kind of holding the ball now. Kicks it to Dikembe Mutombo, who's going to give you offense. Looks like he's traveling. Looks like he's getting blocked pathetically. No time left on the shot clock. Has to put it up, and he still cannot get the first points for the Atlanta Hawks. Real struggle here as Dr. J just goes right around, glides around Hagen, and he gets two points. Dr. J fist pumping. Not looking good if you're an Atlanta Hawks fan. Thank God these NBA games are long and tedious, but it is already seven to nothing. We are waiting for the Atlanta Hawks to get their first points of the game. Almost three minutes, and they still have not scored. They need a timeout. And Dikembe inbounds the ball to Cliff Hagen. Hagen got Dr. J on him. LeBron James going to try to run some offense here. Looks like they might have a double screen set up, and he just rejects everything. Nope, there he goes. One screen, pulls up from three, and he misses because LeBron James can't shoot. And this is still a zero, a blank, a nothing. Larry Bird pulls up. He gets his shit blocked by Dikembe Mutombo. Dikembe sticks that big finger up, says, not in my house. LeBron bringing the ball up the court. Feels like he has a massive side of size advantage here against Bob Cousy, but they're going to try to give it to Carl Malone out of the post, guarded by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Malone, shimmy, shaking, stepping out of bounds, pump faking, missing a layup. We're about to go four minutes without a single point being scored by the Atlanta Hawks. Rough, brutal stretch of basketball right now. Larry Bird wide open from the free throw line. Splash. Nine. Nothing. Larry saying hype. Larry saying I got this. Larry saying I'm the best small forward in history. Not that LeBron James fella. LeBron trying to go right around Kuzi. Take out his do-it-yourself kit. And he finally gets the first points of the game for the Atlanta Hawks. Go almost the entire first quarter. But they have a nice battle here into the second quarter. And the Celtics are stomping. Here going into the third quarter, it is a 91-88 game, 93-96. And we'll hop in with about five minutes left regardless of the score. I think there's still a chance that the Hawks can make a little bit of a battle, but it might be close, might not be. 109-111. Celtics inbounding the ball with about four minutes left. Bill Russell making his way into the game. And Kevin McHale going to run off some screens. Okay, nothing happening. It looks like there's Tom Brady on the court. Who is this? That's the Cohen's guy that I never knew. Julie serving. Looked like he had a lane. Now he's stepping back. Trying to get two. Go oh, the highlight. Dr. J flying. The first professional dunker. Look at him go. Posterizes poor Dominique Wilkins. And it's now a four point game. 109-113. LeBron James waiting to check in. But Hagen is going to ball handle. Going to pull up from the elbow. And he's going to miss. Is this more of the same of what we saw? The Atlanta Hawks going absolutely empty every single trip while the Celtics score efficiently. And looks like they just throw the ball away to Dikembe Mutombo. That'll work. Hagen bringing the ball up the court. Got a center on him, and he's going to draw the foul. How is LeBron James going to check in if he's playing point guard? First free throws up and good. Next free throw up. And he misses one for two. It is a three-point deficit with three and a half minutes left. LeBron James has checked into the game, guarding Bob Cousy at this point. Cousy wait for the play to be set up. Looks like it's just a swat and a foul call. Larry Bird gets bailed out with the superstar foul call. That looked clean. I'd challenge it if I'm the Atlanta Hawks, but Larry Bird going to go to the free throw line and probably make both his free throws because this man is a killer. This man is clutch, and he's already scored 23 points and eight assists. Make it 24. Hawks, three and a half minutes. They need to start responding. Down by five. Not out of it yet. Need to run some good offense, play some good defense, and hopefully they'll be 
enough time for a small comeback as Dominique Wilkins draws the foul and almost hits the and one. John Havlicek picking up his fifth foul. And Neek going to the free throw line, making the first. 14 points, 4-4 four, four from the free throw line and make that 5 of 5, 15 points for Dominique on the night. Bob Cousy going to try to run the troops the other way down or up by three are the Celtics. And Larry Bird just kind of gives it the ball really quickly. What's the play here? It's going to Kareem. Not really sure why you want to get Kareem the ball this far away from the hoop, but he just charges and gets blocked pathetically by Pau Gasol. Kareem got blocked by Pau Gasol. Stand up, Atlanta. And here is Hagen running the offense. Going to get a double screen himself, and he's just going to pull it from three, and he's going to splash and tie the game. Tied it up at 115 apiece. Two and a half minutes left in the game. How do the Celtics respond after blowing this five-point lead that they had? Uzi tries to go. Dr. J is trying to dribble. And were we just triple threading? I swing. What is the play here? Looks like Larry Bird going to post up. He's got Pau Gasol. He's stepping back. Pump faking. And he's taking the shot anyway. He doesn't care how many hands are in his face. Larry Bird is going to take every single shot. Hagen bringing the ball up the court the other way. And King James going to wait for the ball. Pau Gasol going to get the screen. And Hagen going right through. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar says, you're too little for me. Okay, Hagen looking to put the Hawks ahead. First free throws up and good. And the Hawks have a one point lead. Hawks call a timeout to ice their own man. Second free throw is up and in. And it is a two point game now. The Celtics need to respond. I honestly thought the Celtics were going to blow out after that first quarter where the Hawks didn't score a single point. But hey. Stranger things have never happened. Dr. J right in the post and he misses, but he gets his own miss. Larry Bird for three. Splash. Larry Legend making his name known, putting his stamp on this game. And the Celtics jump out to a one point lead. LeBron looking to respond and he's got Kuzi leaning and he just throws the ball away stupidly. What are you doing? Highest IQ in basketball turns into a turnover. And Bob Cousy's just running now. He's sprinting without the ball. Larry Legend gets the ball way underneath the basket. Pau Gasol trying to post him up. Plays defense and miss. Still a one-point game with the Celtics in the driver's seat. One minute, 20 seconds left. Hagen gives it to LeBron James before running out of bounds. Almost was a turnover again. LeBron hoping to avoid a late last-second turnover. Dominique pump fakes the three, kicks it to Hagen. And Hagen's waiting to set up some offense here. Gets the screen. Gets the second screen. Pulls up from three. And he misses. Not a good shot if you're an Atlanta Hawks fan. Under one minute left. Julius Serving kicks it. Bob Cousy has the ball now being picked up by LeBron James. Cousy stepping back to the three-point line. And he just no-looks it to Larry Bird. Put the highlights on. That play was beautiful. Larry Bird with the backdoor cut. Pau Gasol too slow. And Bob Cousy getting flashy here in the fourth quarter. Three-point lead now for the Boston Celtics. 50 seconds left. Hawks need a score here. LeBron James comes around, doesn't get the ball. Looks like they're going to set a screen on Larry Bird. Pulls up from a long two, and Hagen splashes. He is their offense right now. I don't know who this man's is, but he's playing good basketball. 119-120. Hawks need to stop here. 36 seconds left in the game. Kuzi open for three. Pull it up and splashing. Bob Kuzi, kill a Kuz. Gives the Celtics a four-point lead. Bob Kuzi with Ice in his veins. Woo! And here we go. The Hawks need to score bad. 30 seconds left down by four. They need to score and they need to start getting into the foul game. Inbound goes to LeBron James. And they're passing it around and Dominique Wilkins gets an easy two points. Now it's time to foul. I don't need a highlight of that. That was, that was way too easy. And looks like John Havlicek is going to go to the free throw line. And hopefully, after pushing, oh, they're fighting. Call it tech, ref. Going to make his clutch free throws. 123, 121, no pressure. Crowd goes silent. Havlicek greens. One more free throw to make it a two possession game. Pressure all on John Havlicek. No timeouts for the Hawks. And he makes them both. Four point game. Hawks need a score. Hagen bringing the ball up the court. They're going to have to run some quick offense. He's dribbling, he's driving, and he's trying to do it himself. He lays it up, and he's ruining the game. The Celtics are about to win. Dr. J going to the free throw line to ice it out. What is Hagen doing? 
Zero IQ move here from the Hawks guards. As now they're down by six with 18 seconds left. And it looks like this is going to be game. Hagen once again bringing the ball up the court. Kick it to a corner. Shooting LeBron James for three. And he misses. And now Kareem Abdul-Jabbar going to the free throw line to just put icing on the cake as the Boston Celtics. Probably no surprises, but they do take out the Atlanta Hawks to be the all-time NBA champions. Definitely a surprise that the Lakers weren't here to meet them, but the Hawks sure fought valiantly. Open three as the clock expires, and there you have it. The NBA imperialism champions, Boston Celtics for the all-time rosters as the best team in the history of basketball. Larry Bird is dancing with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Dr. J is standing up and saying, you know who I am. You know who we are. We are the Boston Celtics. And look at the Bench Mafia cheer. Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, Bill Russell, some guy named Charmin. Isn't that what toilet paper is? And Larry Bird is clapping as the Hawks in disbelief. Cannot believe they came so close to being imperialism champions and falling so short. Time for the championship celebration led by Commissioner Adam Silver. Oh, uh, the camera's just broken. I can't actually skip through this. You, you can hear. That's my controller there. The camera's broken. You want to hear the speech? I can play the audio. You're Bill Russell, Finals MVP. And there you have it. Larry Bird, Killer Instincts, Bob Cousy pulling up from three. And of course, no look passing. And the duo that led the Boston Celtics to many championships leads them to the Imperialism Championship. Good game from Larry Legend. Same from Julius Irving. As for the losing team, LeBron James played valiantly 29-5-10. Cliff Hagen apparently balled the hell out. Neek was okay, but they just did not get enough help from the bench. And just to make this whole damn thing official, there you have it. Boston Celtics Imperialism NBA champions for the all-time great teams. That's going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one.